for a five buck donation, you get access to an extended crazier private episode of the podcast each month. These shows are a lot of fun for us to do for you guys, so you don't want to miss it live. Hello, DP fans. Swegta here. Our good friends at DP have been kind enough to give me a moment to tell you about Underhaven. Underhaven is a DP-inspired podcast, which you can watch live on most Saturdays an hour or so before DP goes live. Underhaven is a podcast hosted by me and Animancer, who some of you may already know is a very dedicated member in the DP fanbase, and so am I. We're gonna have plenty of interesting guests, we're gonna accept Discord call-ins from you, the audience, we're gonna dive headfirst into the cesspool that is internet culture, and much, much more, all for your and our entertainment. In the beginning, there was nothing, and then there was the Drunken Peasants Podcast. Say, hey, man, you got a joint? Uh, no, not on you, man. Oh, 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 oh. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> from the strangest corners of the internet, here to bring you opinions of the world from an altered perspective. Here are your hosts, the Drunken Peasants. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Drunken Peasants Podcast, episode 457. And uh, joining us tonight for the first time ever, we have Arch, Warhammer, and V. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for for having us. So, uh, I think most of the people watching are familiar with you, but would you like to give a a self-introduction at all? Okay, I'll go first then. All right. Uh, I'm Arch. I mostly do uh, gaming and Warhammer 40k and Warhammer stuff. That's my main thing. I've been a little bit involved in politics as of late, as uh, the usual suspects, feminism, etc., has started to encringe upon my beloved hobby as well. But other than that, I'm mostly a uh, gaming and lore channel. And uh, yeah, I'm V. I uh, also run a YouTube channel, um, and I just pick news that I find funny and I comment on it. That's similar to what we do here. But what? So everyone wants to kick you, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, that is a meme. Um, started off as some, some people that legitimately wanted to kick me, but I then went into the chat and started to say, kick me myself, and then people just uh, meme- memeized that. You were uh, you were involved in, in some of the blood sports channels for a while, right? You were like a regular guest? Yeah. Yeah. So isn't it weird how big those got and how they're basically gone now? Um, I I suppose in a way, I mean, uh, I think the reason they got big um, is because they brought something new to YouTube. Um, they, they brought this new ideology, I guess. And people were interested in seeing Richard Spencer uh, debate Sargon of Akkad, and that's when it blew up. It became, I believe, the number one trending stream on YouTube. Uh, but the, then there was arguments with the guests, there were people uh, fighting with each other, so it spread into smaller live streams. Yeah. And now I think the community for that is spread amongst different channels. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, JF, he, he, he got his start on YouTube here on our show, so it, it was interesting to kind of watch his progression. Um, he was a very different guy. Yeah, I was the one that really got him into preserving the white race. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's doing well. A, a, a little meltdown, though. Like he disabled likes and dislikes. I'm afraid to go into his chat because I don't know what's going to ban me. Like I don't know the rules for his. He chat. might actually kick V. He might Forever. actually kick. Me. He, he he did kick me on his show actually. Dick. Um, but uh, yeah, I think he's the one doing uh, still quite well compared to to the other IBS challenges. Okay. Now, now, Arch, you said that feminism is creeping in on on Warhammer? Yes, uh, it's been starting to make some (coughs) small inroads there. Basically, you remember how things were before Gamergate, the the, the little things, all the little niggles? That's where Warhammer is now. Hmm. I had no idea. You know, you know, you know what's so strange about that? About three years ago, I went to a tabletop gaming 
place and no lie anita sarkeesian walked in <laughs> and sat down behind me and i took a photo of her over my shoulder a selfie oh, of myself the guy. yeah 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 that's me <laughs> So it's so strange that we talk about tabletop gaming and Gamergate when literally I was in the midst of that, literally. So know? basically, you're the reason that Warhammer is, is failing <laughs> no, right now. I wasn't playing Warhammer, but yeah, sure. I'll say that. I have played Warhammer 40k before, though. And uh, I, I was really into that in Battletech. I spent like $300 on Warhammer 40k and didn't even finish painting the pieces. I've never played it or anything. <laughs> you're lazy as fuck. I know. So in, the, the, in what ways? Battle tech, like, did, did you follow the controversy regarding the video game? I wanted to buy it, and then they they start making uh, uh, gender neutral pronouns and banning anyone on Steam. Like they banned me on Steam Live. I was on a live stream when I was making fun of them, and they banned me um, through BattleTech. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the the video huh. game BattleTech, you know, the one on Steam, and uh, yeah, apparently, if if you just asked any question, if you contradicted. Uh, or were a little bit bewildered by their decision, they would just outright ban you. Yeah, they I were had... banning people on their forums for asking why there were no blonde hair colors in the game. <laughs> really? I, I had no idea this was going on. There was no blonde, but there was eight shades of purple? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Damn it. Purple and pink. Yeah. Yeah, recently uh, we, were, we were walking around in a, a very politically correct neighborhood in the city that we live in. Uh, where the crosswalks are painted like rainbows. And, Fact. And, and uh, we... Someone that we were with asked this woman with pink hair how many genders there were, and she chased us down the street and took a picture of us and plastered it all over Facebook, <coughs> saying that we were aggressive... Uh, Which is like, really unfair, because I'm about misogynous. as androgynous as it gets, so... <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm literally both genders without trying, without wanting, without deciding. I am uh, I'm a, an amalgamation of man and woman. You're not. Well, here, here's the question: Basically. the rainbow flag did it have the brown and black color? No, no. Well, the rainbow it wasn't even a flag. It was the, the sidewalks, the yeah, crosswalks they, are painted rainbow. Yeah, the places where you cross the street at the light is painted like they're, they're painted like rainbows. In the this roads are dripped in rainbows. Yep. Oh my god. Yeah. That's adorable. <laughs> it is. It's called the gayberhood. Yeah, and there's there's all these <laughs> there's a lot of like virtue signaling signs out front of uh, of these places that are like all races welcome, all genders welcome. It's like, isn't that normal? I mean, how many places say you know we yeah, don't? Yeah, like, isn't it illegal if you don't? Right, right. No racism allowed. You'll see signs like that. I don't know, man. If gay people came into my cake shop. I would sell them a cake, but I'd fuck it up. <laughs> I'd like I'd like sneak something in the frosting. That's gross. What? Jizz? Well, 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 no, let's, like let's salt. Let's talk about that for a second, right? Like, <laughs> okay. If, if I go into a Muslim bakery and I ask a cake uh, with uh, Muhammad fucking Aisha, you know, is the baker forced to sell me that? <laughs> Who no, gets, but I think that would also be considered like child porn or something. Who gets the it? fatwa? Who, who gets the fatwa on that? Is it the baker or the person that ordered the cake? Billy, why did you make one uh, sleep? I, I think before? Aisha gets the fuck one. have letter cut you okay. and sleep inside of you like a ton ton. Cause, cause ton ton. Oh, and by the way, Super Chats and Streamlabs, we're going to start reading those after each segment. So we're going to do the news segment in a minute, and then we'll read all the Streamlabs after that, and then we'll go into the next one, just so everyone that's watching is familiar with the new way that we're going to do it. Yeah. But yeah, uh, what, if, what, if, uh, what if you wanted a bacon cake? At a at a Muslim bakery or at a vegan bakery, even like yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want a I'm, cake with bacon on it. We don't make those here. Well, you better, because bacon is my religion. Bacon well, yeah, is my sexual thing, right, orientation. That, that if you have like a Christian bakery, right? You you have a Christian clientele, and if you're going to write things that are against Christianity, you're you're going to lose your clientele. Yep. So it's not, you know, just because the guy's a bigot, it's just how business goes. Like, you're, you're identifying as that particular um, religion non denomination. But have you tasted bigot cakes? They're so much better than, <laughs> than, than like, regular acceptable cakes. You know what, though? I, years ago, there was, there was a, a guy who named his son Adolf Hitler, 
and he and he went to a Walmart bakery to have them make a cake that said "Happy Birthday, Adolf Hitler," and Walmart wouldn't do it. So and, yeah, I and about that. yeah, and <laughs> and nobody nobody complained about them refusing to make the cake for them. Oh, it's yeah, because, because discrimination discrimination can only happen because of gender, race, uh, religion. Like th- th- there's a couple of uh, uh, finite things which you can discriminate someone, and based on their name is not one of them. Right. Right. And so that's- I'm okay. I'm okay with private businesses cho- making those sorts of decisions. I, on the same on the same token, even though I don't agree with it, I'm fine with Twitter shadow banning and, and doing all the, the garbage they do because technically they are a private company and you know, they can, they can do as they please. And people, oh, they, can't, whether... they, can't, they got sued. They got sued. They can't. Yeah. It's actually um, now in America, now that Trump has been found, uh, what, what is it? The, uh, the decision of the court said that Trump couldn't ban people on Twitter because it was a public forum. Well, now uh... voila, it's a public forum. Yeah, so so if you get banned by Jack, you're basically able to sue him because you're not able to communicate with your United States president. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not making this up. I think there is actually a lawsuit going on regarding that. So, someone actually sued Jack because they got banned. That's ridiculous. Well, they, they started it. <laughs> they started it. They started I think it Twitter's... and they were celebrating. It's like, yay, Donald Trump can't ban people. Well, by that logic... If I'm banned from Twitter, I can't speak to Donald Trump if I'm a United States citizen. And therefore, if Jack bans me, he's breaking the law. But when was it ever your right to speak to the fucking president? Well, he, well how many presidents uh, the, the use moment, Twitter? The moment the Supreme Court decided that it's a constitutional right for journalists to be able to tweet at Trump. That's when. I think Trump can ban whoever he wants, and I think Twitter can ban whoever they want. If they See, put- you don't understand, Amerikanski. When the Founding Fathers came in, right, and they wrote the Constitution, they knew that whilst the Twitter is going to be a thing, yeah. that it will be unconstitutional for people not to be able to tweet that Donald Trump. But there's an no- amendment. There's an amendment there that says you can't DM dick pics. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cock pick amendment. We're going to get into the news segment now. Here's the awesome intro. Alright. So, are, are either of you guys familiar with Michael Moore? I'm guessing you are. You're probably not a fan. Not not good with names, but great with faces. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a very liberal director. Um, he made uh, Bowling for Columbine. Yeah, Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit 9-11. 9-11. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So Fast he. Dude. Yeah. And 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 he's very uh, he's he's pissed off about Trump. He's talking shit to his own base. He's a Michigani. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll get to that another time. <laughs> Time now, wait for it. Friday Follies. <laughs> wait for it. Oh man, my intro's way better than that. Why wait yeah, for that, that it. is so <laughs> fake. This, this is what I don't like about the American media. Like everything is so corporate, everything is so fake. No wonder the alternative media is growing. Yeah, well, they're doing everything they can to suppress it on YouTube these days. You go to Social Blade and look at Fox News and CNN, you'll see a, a dramatic upswing in new subscribers and views. On both of them, oh, wow. because YouTube pushes them to the top. At this point, I mean, yeah, I CNN. Think, I and- think the Young Turks is suffering now. Who's suffering? The Young Turks. Oh yeah, actually they are, but they're not mainstream. Yeah. So they're you know they're a popular YouTube based news outlet. Um, you know, so they're they're getting hit because they don't. You know, YouTube wants to become. A, a television provider now, so yep. they don't they don't want you watching anything that's independently created. They want these you know these corporate entities. Even the to commentary get to the top. community, the commentary community that would normally 
comment on like dumbass YouTubers. They've switched over to commenting on like Dr. Phil, dumbass yep. people on Dr. Phil, dumbass people on like uh, teen teens with too much money type of fucking uh, reality shows. Right. It's it's all going well, towards way, produced that Fox television. News is being bought by by a liberal, so it's it's going yeah. to stop being right. Is it? I did not know that. I, that I, that's what I heard recently. So I heard Fox expected. Media. Fox Media was being bought by Disney and then Comcast swooped in, but I thought that the news company was going to stay with um, Rupert Murdoch. Uh, yeah, I, I, I need to fact check that. It's just one of my subscribers told me that, so I was like, oh, really? That's that's kind of bad. I do know but, the Fox... The It's weird because the Fox Media company is normally liberal. Like, if you watch, yeah. like, The Simpsons or something, there 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 is, like, a left lean oh, to... Totally. Uh, uh, Seth MacFarlane... Conservatives, yeah. He does Family Guy and he does American Dad and it's it's he's he's a hundred percent like a liberal leaning dude and he goes against Fox itself and they yeah, allow that is it. Weird. They allow it because they don't give a shit. There's some kind of disconnect there between those two properties. Fox I News believe. is independent even after Disney. Uh, Fox News, Fox Sports, Big Ten Network, and Fox Deports uh, are independent still. Everything else is now Disney. Yeah. Hmm. Man, Disney's taking over the world. Well, if they get it, Comcast really came in. Why, why do you know all these things? I've got access to Google. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> like you, I just search it up. Big Ten Network is a sports network. Yeah. Um, the, they're like they're holding on to their sports and news yeah. uh, networks because Disney owns ESPN and then uh, ABC and all their news property so they don't really want that. And I think Fox wants to hold on to that news part because it's media control. And it's probably the only uh, media source in the U.S. that doesn't hate Trump. So, I mean, they've got a thing going. Yeah. But I Rupert mean, Murdoch hates media Trump, control, right? This, this is a little off topic. But did you guys notice that every single media, mainstream media website almost, has decided to ban the comment section? And, and I was thinking about this, right? Because there was this study that came on and said that uh, people are more likely to change their mind by reading the comment section rather than reading the article. But, and, and if you think about it from a financial point of view, if you go to, let's say, CNN and you read an article, uh, you're giving them one click. So you're only seeing their ads once. But if there's a comment section, you posted that comment section and then someone else comes in, gives you a reply. And then you, you, you might be willing to go back and comment and you might have a discussion back and forth, which means you're going to click that article several times, seeing those ads several times. And the, it gives them views. So they're making more money. So. By shutting down the comment section, they actually are choosing to take a financial hit. That but, is true. Yeah, but but to, to make sure that you are getting the message they want, rather yeah. than uh, you know ha have someone in the comment section provide the, the alternative version. But that's more valuable, right? Control? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And the way they lie usually is by presenting half the truth, right? Because they don't they don't outright lie about something. They only present half the narrative. And if they would have a comment section, you'd have people coming in and presenting the other half. Yeah, I think it's about a twenty years ago we had we started to get the spin on everything, where they would spin news to to lean somewhere, and it's just gotten to the point where you don't you don't have to lie because you can take any sort of viewpoint on the same fucking thing and shade it towards your directive, and we've we've been stuck in that for so long that. We, we we don't live in a world of fake news. We live in a world of no news. It's just expressed opinion, and uh, people watching just want to have their own opinions va va validated. Yeah, you have one side being like, "Well, we tell this side," and then the other the other media like Fox, they tell the other side. So yeah, you exactly. only get like the, the only way to stay informed, and a lot of people don't don't find this comfortable, is to read both news, uh, like read the Young Turks and at the same time read the Daily Stormer, basically, you know, just <laughs> giving you the, the extremes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, unfortunately, you do need to read, like, The Guardian and you need to read Breitbart. You need to, you know, watch Fox News and you need to watch CNN because otherwise you're not going to get the full picture. I'm going to get all my news from Alex Jones. <laughs> I... <laughs> I, I, I do something different. I just wait to hear the sirens, the war sirens, and that's how I know shit's real. The bomb sirens? Yeah. Once I hear the bomb sirens, then I'm like, okay, this is all the news I need. We're about to fucking die. Up until then, fuck the world. Wow. Fuck news. So edgy. Fuck news. 
So this guy right here on the screen, that's Michael Moore. He, uh, yeah, I know him. Yeah. Uh, he, that's not Roseanne Barr. Uh, he looks weird. He doesn't look like a guy that's um, a millionaire. Do you think he eats at ass? All. I don't know, maybe. You know I don't understand says. that. But anyway, I love that. Filmmaker Michael Moore sat down with Stephen Colbert last night to push a new documentary. Oh, and he also, of course, demonized the president. And then he <laughs> went a step further, joining me to discuss this and the music that's news? making you... Yeah, yeah. What what he said on, an, on a late night entertainment show is news. Young loiterers cry. <laughs> Bad joke. It's oh Fox God, News he, contributor. He looks like one of those robots. Like, did you see the... <laughs> Did you see the robot, you know, the artificial woman that uh, got, like, so, I believe saw the citizenship or something like that? This guy looks like the male version of that female robot. <laughs> I heard that there's sex robots now that uh, that can turn people down. Yeah, they have uh, the right to consent. Yeah, could you imagine an incel buying a sex robot like, fuck, I'm finally going to get laid. And it's like, no, nope, sorry. Just buy an older I can model. imagine art hacking that robot, you know? The great news is that you can finally rape your sex robot. That's that's the, that's the <laughs> only reason that they have consent built in is so you can rape them. That's the only fucking reason because people still want that simulated experience. They want something to say no and it turns them on. That's that's the but, but only so reason they have consent. Like, like, like think about it, right? It, it's a tool. That's what it is. It's like a vibrator for women, right? <laughs> Imagine if you have a hammer. It's like I do not give you consent to to break the nails today. It's like what. <laughs> If you put Michael Moore in a moo moo, he would look like a trailer park granny, basically. Yeah. Into the way in which he described the policy. Either he's <laughs> angry or he's drunk. What, what the fuck is wrong with him? Sees a President Trump. I am as civil as, as any Eagle Scout Catholic altar boy could be when confronted with the devil. We're not talking about political Ooh. differences. We're talking about thousands of children being kidnapped. From their parents. <laughs> Kidnapped. And put really? in okay. That's not yeah. hyperbolic or anything at all. Right. How, how do you how do you feel about the children being locked up in cages and taken away from their parents? Okay, well the the way I view it, right, is that I, I picture myself in Mexico and in front of me is the American border. Okay, the problem starts there. So the way to avoid the problem is to not go there. I agree. I agree. Ultimately, <laughs> um, but then you look you look the other way, and 133 Mexican politicians were killed in the last year. Politicians, 133. It politicians. is a shit country. It's a shit country. So maybe it's worth rolling the dice and letting your kids get locked up in a cage for the hopes that they don't, and they get put into a fucking scenario where they can grow up and be, I don't know, not president, but. Oh, this is this is Bill Clinton's uh, doing, right? He signed the law, and, and the idea was to separate the children from the the people trap, the smugglers, because if someone like this is what the left always does, they assume. The, the, the good in people, right? So they assume that if someone comes with a kid at the border and says, yeah, this is my kid, that they're not lying. You know, like the idea of someone lying is bewildering to them. Uh, but unfortunately, we live in the real world where there are these people called people smugglers and they would say, yeah, this is my kid, but they're lying. So how can you tell? Well, you separate the kid from the adult and you interview them both. Right? And, and that's how you find out if it's legit with his parents or not. How... How do both of you feel about the the proposition of the border wall? And um, I don't even I personally don't even think it's possible to build a coast to coast wall over the terrain that they propose. I I mean it, it would take forever to build a physical. I wall. say build it. Build walls work. That's this is a simple fact. You know, they're relatively How simple. How do they work? <laughs> They keep well, people out because they're big. <laughs> I just, I just think it's unrealistic. I, I mean, the, the type of train that they'd have to build it, a physical wall on, it would be so difficult to do. You know, you know what's your problem? Your, your, your problem is that you're embracing negativity. I think where there's a little, there's a way. <laughs> I would just. But, well, I, I mean, another thing, another thing is that there's already hundreds of tunnels. A wall won't stop that. And then we also have people that, you know, they'll start in Mexico and they'll get in a boat and they'll yeah. sail really far out into the water and then they'll try to hook back around once they've crossed the border. So I think having something like uh, more, more people physically guarding the border as well as maybe like drones and more technology would make more sense than a physical wall. And aren't the majority of uh, legal... <laughs> landmines? <laughs> no, I can't. Yeah, I can't. Honestly, okay, landmines don't attack people, right? They sit there. 
It's not I mean, all glasses, though. Landmines, well, have you seen landmines the, become hazards, yeah, you know, two, decades, three decades centuries later. later those little kids in Africa. There, okay, there's no need to go over there. So even if they become hazard, no one is going to go over there. I mean, <laughs> this is psycho. <laughs> You're asking for it, okay? Not for rape culture. Yeah, so if you're gonna, you, you, you know, like you, you might actually even have a reality show to sponsor the landmines. Like if 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 you have a group of people that traverse the border <laughs> and they somehow make it, God wants them in America. Okay, like so, if you <laughs> manage to get through the landmine, the, the, it's the, like God human. Wants you there. It's like human plinko from the Price is Right, where you put that chip <laughs> yeah. in and the plinko chip bounces around. If the human bounces around and doesn't hit a landmine, let him in, give him full access to America. But seriously, Arch, it's not even that far could, fetched. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is, this has already actually been done. That's the insane thing. Saudi Arabia has literally built a wall on their border with Iraq, which has watchtowers, radar, underground movement sensors against uh, tunnels, mines, barbed wire, fences, helicopter patrols. Saudi Arabia does not do anything by halves. Yeah. But, what? Uh, well, okay, okay. Let, let, let's have a serious conversation. If you want to stop yeah. immigration to the United States, what you need to do is to give massive fines to corporations that are hiring illegals. Boom. That's what yeah. you need to do. Yeah, Boom. I agree with you there. 100%. And, and also give fines to people that are housing illegals. Okay. Yeah, it should be illegal sure. to help them. It should be aiding and abetting yeah. a criminal. I fine. agree. Exactly. Like, treat them ex like, like, criminalize it even further, because I understand it's a misdemeanor, right? The problem with the America is that it has gotten to a level where it's actually endangering the uh, uh, the, the the safety of the citizens due to but, the, uh, the the strain they put on the welfare and the strain they put on the infrastructure and uh, the strain they put on the uh, local law enforcement. So therefore, it should not be just a misdemeanor; it should be a crime. And anyone housing criminals, you know, should also be uh, held accountable for it. But what if you're only like holding them for sexual purposes in your basement? <laughs> That, that okay? still be a misdemeanor because yeah. so now I'm a that's criminal. Okay. Now I'm a criminal. <laughs> Fuck. You are. You always have been. Oh. But oh, yeah, let, know, like let's say we make it a let's say we make it a felony though to be in the US, you know, illegally. So do we do we lock a bunch of illegal immigrants up in our prisons? I mean, we no. already are. Or probably you already are. Yeah. Sure. The, uh, um, the government is literally renting prison space because they don't have enough camps. <laughs> Which is another reason, by the way, why we should be separating the children. Okay, <coughs> ask yourself, do you want your kid to be in a summer camp or in a prison? Where where do you think he's got the best chance it's, of getting It's uh, hardly a summer camp. Well, yeah, w weren't, weren't there cages? Were those cages fake news? Like, well, yeah, the cages were actually you from do, Obama. You, you, you can do, like, if you really want to deal with this problem, right? You can do what yeah. Hungary does. So, so Hungary had the problem in... Um, turning back refugees because there would be NGOs with lawyers that would constantly try to prolong the process until the refugees would run away and then they would not be able to find them. So what Hungary did is that they moved their border a little bit back. And where their border used to be is now called the transition area where technically you're not in Hungary, but you're also in Hungary. It's like this murky gray area, right? So whenever they catch refugees, they deport them into this transition area where the judges don't have jurisdiction. So while they're in the transition area, they're allowed to leave whatever they want, but they can't come into the country until they're being processed. So, so you would have like this transition area in the desert, I guess, where you're putting the, the illegals that you found, and you can tell them, well, whatever you want, you can go back to Mexico. No one's keeping you by force. But if you want to come into the United States, you, you have to wait until you're being processed. But it's, but it's actually don't, not in Europe. It's not. Don't, it's not something. I'm pretty sure most really of the immigrants, that, most of the immigrants that come to the United States, just overstay their visa, right? The illegal immigrants, they they come in with a visa. And they, I mean, yeah, there's migrant the, workers. The problem is that when they catch them, they can't deport them. Um, as, as I understand it, there there's NGOs, there's activist groups that, that there's a team of lawyers that constantly make it as difficult as possible to to have them deported. Also, by the way, I just like to point out, you know the uh, viral photo with the two kids in the uh, the cage, you know, there's uh, rubbish on the floor and stuff? That was taken in 2014 under President Obama. How dare he? Really? Wow, I didn't know that. How dare Obama have kids in cages? It's different, though, because Obama was a good president, right? Yes, precisely. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything that about that. Uh, no, I mean, there... So a lot of it did start under Obama, but I don't think 
that doesn't make me agree with it anymore. The kids in cages right. though, was from Obama's Obama's reign, and now Trump has taken the heat. That's that's what I mean. Either way, that doesn't that doesn't make it better. It who, does. Who started I understand, it. understand they're like summer camps, right? Because that's an exaggeration. <laughs> yeah, right. And obviously, oh, okay. So, so there's two things here. Number one, the kids are criminal, and I know this is shocking, right? But they still cross the border. They still committed the crime, and society is not going to is still criminalizing delinquents that are juveniles. However, the punishment is less severe, right? They're not put in a prison. They're put in a re-education uh, or whatever you call it, a, a, a child facility or... And know, I'd also house. just, um, sorry for interrupting me, but I want to put yeah. in the, the reason why they're put in these places is do, I don't remember the name of the law, but there's a law specifically stating that the children are to be put under the least possible amount of duress. That is the reason why they're separated from their parents, because their parents get put in actual prisons. Yeah. And the, the, the cage is so that they don't run away, obviously, right? Because if you have children running away, then you would have an actual uh, scandal uh, if the parent comes to collect his kid and can't find yeah. the kid there. You have to lock the kids in cages. You Sorry, can't give them all. Child. You can't give them all leashes. <laughs> well, no, no, I mean, they, they weren't. They weren't cages because I, I, I. Okay, technically they are cages, but they, they, they were just where they slept, right? And when they wake up, they do have like playtime. They were playing football. I saw they have uh, places where they go to study. Uh, they're being well fed. Uh, they, they have like entertainment rooms and only during the night do they go into those cages in order to sleep, right? So they don't walk around the facility and get lost. Those are their night cages. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know the night so cage, it's, yeah. It's like one of those <laughs> Swedish prisons, you know? The Swedish prison. Yeah, the oh, Swedish prisons are really... That. <laughs> the, the, they're like really nice. Uh, they they get to live together in uh, in dorms together and there's recording studios and all kinds of nice fun recording stuff. Recording studios? Yes. Yeah. I can do one better. In Norway, we have a prison that isn't a prison. It's an island. There are no cages. There are no locked doors. It's just an island. It's a literal summer retreat. <laughs> I, I heard about that, yeah. Can I, can I come to Norway and commit the crime? Isn't the maximum isn't the maximum sentence in uh, Norway like 30 years or something? No, I think it's 22, but we have a special rule called, um, I, what, how do I even translate this, for dividing, uh, which basically means that if you've done something really nasty, then after those 20 years, we reserve the right to imprison you for another 20 years, and so on and so on. I see. So there's a so, loophole so to it. Like, you, need, you need good behavior not to be re-imprisoned, I guess. Kind of. I mean, like... Um, Breivik, you know, the crazy terrorist yeah. guy, He's he's got that, so he's probably never getting out... Unless something really dirty happens, not impossible, but it's unlikely. Yeah. yeah, he uh he committed a mass shooting, correct? Granted, he was shooting communists, so you know. <laughs> well, why not lock him up then? Jesus, give give the man some soldiers. Well, it's soldiers. because he couldn't divvy the uh, bullets evenly amongst the communists. <laughs> anyway, uh, built should, a we, special should we wing watch what it. Michael Moore has to say? Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> Jail devil is kidnapping children and putting them in jail. Now, people disagreed, black sites. People disagreed with the, the, the drone strikes of President Obama, the black sites of President Bush, and they both separated families. No one ever painted in these stark, violent terms. Because when you hear that, you He's think this leader must be removed. Would it be less a drain on society to just send them back rather than keeping them in... Uh, yeah, that's that's in, why I said with the president. Legally, you can't. That's the problem. Um, every illegal immigrant literally has the right to the full protection of the U.S. legal system. Like, you have to literally put him through the whole system and prove that he is an illegal immigrant, then he can appeal, and so on and so on. The transition area, it's like, yeah, while you're waiting your trial, you're going to stay in this place. You can go back to Mexico by yourself, whatever you want. Yep. I, I like how By this way, gentleman did, did in the purple tie. Did you notice know something interesting? Every time you see a, an immigrant on CNN or what, what MSNBC or any of it, they never speak English. And it's like, here's this old lady that's going to be separated from her children. She's been in the United States for 25 years, and, and she and she hoblos. She hoblos. Yeah. She, <laughs> she does. She, she cannot. She cannot speak English. I'm from fucking Romania, right? I, I, there is no reason why I should be able to speak English, right? And I can do it. But but you have the Mexicana that can't. Like, what? Why is that a thing? That's because we have huge communities all throughout the United States where Spanish is the primary spoken language, and people can go 
Uh, they can go their entire lives pretty much only communicating in Spanish. Yeah, Which I, is I get terrible. That. I mean, they've and, ghettoized to such a ludicrous degree. Yeah. And the closer I, you you live to the equator in North America, the more likely you are to be I mean, lazy. Another, to be fair, though, there are huge areas of land that were annexed by the United States quite some time ago that used to be part of Mexico, and some of these small villages... They have been speaking Spanish since they were part of Mexico. No one came there. There was no reason to assimilate because that's the way it's always been. So, yeah, I mean, the- you need to really go out of your way not to learn English, right? And the thing is, like in in my country, we also have Hungarians, right? And they're, they're in isolated communion <laughs> communities. They fucking speak Romanian. You know, even even the Hungarians that are separatists and they want to the separate, they still speak Romanian. I would say, you know, I've been to Europe twice and I've noticed that there is more, there's more of an emphasis on education to learn at least English as a second language for everyone. Yeah. A lot of the Europeans I know speak like three or four or five, six, seven yeah, different yeah. languages. Yeah, I yeah. Took, I took Spanish in high school. They taught me the meaning of words. They did not teach me how to, you know, have a conversation in Spanish. Yeah. Here in America, they teach you how to keep up with the Kardashians. Yeah. Well, how, how can you watch hentai and appreciate it if you don't know English? I mean, you, you know, obviously you're not going to learn Japanese. God damn you, oh, savage yeah. me. You can't enjoy hentai unless you understand Japanese. Strong with you. Oh, oh yeah, you, you're, you're going to talk Japanese now. <laughs> yes, no baka, no hentai, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, oh, the next video I have is hilarious. A, a comedian who, who used to work for the Howard Stern show, John Melendez... He called Donald Trump pretending to be a senator and got through to him and taught and had a whole conversation with him. Damn. Yeah. Hi Bob. Hey, how are you? Yeah, that guy's stuttering John from the how Howard Stern Show. Congratulations on everything. Fair, I, I don't think this is uh, that outlandish. Like if you're the United States president, you probably have like a million and one things on your head. Sure. You know, and this guy calls in and he's a senator. Like, yeah, okay, fine. He's a senator, you know. Proud of you. Congratulations. Great job. You went through a tough, tough situation. And I don't think a very fair situation. Uh, That there was actually a prank call. A comedian, John Melendez, also known to fans of Howard Stern as Stuttering John, says he pretended to be Democratic Senator Bob Menendez, and he called the White House and eventually got to speak with President Trump on Air Force One, the comedian. Uh, I have to wonder how many people are going to try to do this now. Oh, God, you don't yeah, want to know. But, but how, <laughs> how many people fucked up until this call got through? Because he called the White House and then someone patched him through, you know? Right, oh, yeah. right. <laughs> Many people have fucked up before this. And Trump probably <coughs> were handed a phone and was just told, like, okay, this is this so-and-so. Yeah, literally. Right. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I don't think it's even Trump's fault. Like he he has people that are supposed to screen this for him. Exactly. I, I I agree. It was patched through to his private airplane that he flies around on. Too. If anybody's <laughs> blaming Trump for this, they're just being petty. No, I just think it's humorous. It, it is funny. But he, that he called them pranked in. You know, the funny thing is, this is on his face. It's almost like he's disgusted. It's like, oh, the president doesn't know all the senators by voice and name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, and there's a hundred of them, so there you go. <laughs> Who's the regular on the Stern Show, as I said, says that's President Trump congratulating who he thought was the senator for his... And this was on Stuttering John's independent podcast, and he asks Trump better questions than most people normally would. Hmm. Corruption charges having been cleared up earlier this year. Uh, I'm, I'm back uh, with the panel. Uh, uh, f- the, one of the ways that the Menendez people found out about this, that's the, sen- the actual senator. I want to hear more of the actual call. I'm just going to skip ahead to that. You're going to go past the white noise. Yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, here it is. Sorry. See what I did there because they're all white. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> for the Supreme Court. I mean, I have a list of people. I have a big list of people, Bob, and uh, we'll take a look at it. And uh, we're going to make a decision. I'll probably make it over the next couple of weeks. Because I promise you, you will have my vote. I will help you if you don't go too, too conservative. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, we will talk to you about it. I, I don't know. <laughs> like, 
he, he speaks in private the same way he speaks in public. It's true. Did you notice this? Like, a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people have, like, a different persona. Like, Hillary Clinton, for instance, speaks completely different in private. Well, than I don't think Trump's capable of changing his tone. He, he's, he's, his, he's this way all the time. Yeah. Yeah, he's the way he wants to be. He doesn't have... Like, most presidents in my lifetime have had handlers and speechwriters. Uh, you know, Trump does have written speeches, but... And, and I'm sure... The right, yeah. The time. Well, it's because he can't read. <laughs> oh, shit. By the way, after after you finish this, um, in Portland, Antifa got their ass kicked. Really? By who? Yeah, uh, well, there's out, protests just... today. Oh, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and apparently the police came in and beat the living shit out of them. <laughs> in Portland? Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be yeah, bad. Yeah, Portland is very left-wing, too. So there, there probably is a huge Antifa presence there. About it, and they followed yeah, up the, with the, the phone? Sorry, go ahead. They, they do seem to have fucked with the wrong neighborhood. Also, let me let me send you something on on Skype. Uh, okay. I think you'll appreciate this. Let's see. Stop! Stop using the N word thing. Yeah. The, no. The the W word. Oh, the W. Okay. Like we are not white. white oh. We are people of light. White. 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 People of light. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and it's by the way, it's people of light, not light people, because that's racist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so let's see what what else it says on the phone. Oh. I, I love how Trump is like, yeah, I mean, yeah, we're going to talk about it in person. We're going to discuss it. It's like. You can see he's going to remain conservative, but he he still wants to like phrase it in a way to impress this guy. Separation. Sure. Yeah, it. yeah. He's always he's always cutting a deal, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, he has to cut a deal. It's like, yeah, we're not doing this <laughs> shit on the phone, bitch. <laughs> so like, whoever he's talking to, he's he's acting like he's interested in whatever they're talking about, even though he's not at all. Yeah. My constituents are giving me a lot of beef about this immigration thing. I know that you did something really noble, like. You know, by trying to, you know, get the kids back with their families, but I have to answer to them. What can I tell them that you're going to do in moving forward? Bob, let me, let me just tell you, I want to be able to take care of the situation <laughs> every bit as much as anybody else at the top level. I'd like to do the larger solution rather than the smaller solution. You know, we do them, they're doing them step by step. I think we could do oh the whole God, thing. He's saying you know, so have... much and he's not saying anything at all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's all over the place with it. He's just, he's he's responding but not answering at all. I have a good relationship yeah, yeah, yeah. with the party. You have a good relationship with the party. And I think we could, could do a real immigration bill. Now, the real Senator Bob Menendez put out a statement uh, saying he would welcome the opportunity to talk to President Trump, but President Trump has sabotaged any attempt to have a real immigration bill. Right. See, I, I was going to say, I think uh, that Paul... Yeah, so I guess I guess the senator that he was pretending to be really doesn't like Trump at all. So it was funny how he called in pretending to be that guy, and Trump was like, oh, a senator? Okay. Yeah. I'll talk to him, whatever. <clears throat> but that, I mean, it, it does kind of show that you know, he's willing to kind of wheel and deal behind the scenes with people from both sides. You, well, you know I, what I would have said? I would have said, it's like, well, I, I suggest we give them to, to uh, one child, to one no-border activist house, you know, because they're open-door type of people. Just just send them to the house of the people that want no borders because they're, they're, they're kids of the world. They're not kids of uh, America. Yeah, you, you know... know the type of people that protest, like, I, I, I saw one of them, they, they had this sign, borders are a scar on the earth. You know, I'm, I'm fine with borders, absolutely. Like, I, I've been to the EU and seen the open border thing there. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's convenient as a traveler. I don't know, you know, I don't know what it's like for the people that actually live in those countries. Horrible. Absolutely dreadful. No, no, no. Um, no. It, it works perfectly well as uh, – this is going to be nice and racist, so prepare to get demonetized. <laughs> but it, it works perfectly fine between white nations. No way in Sweden. No problems. Sweden, Denmark, no issues. Finland, we can travel across <coughs> each other's borders. No issues. Except for Russia, obviously, but they're not white. It, the it, moment it you bring with... brown people into the, uh, the, the uh, calculation, that problem starts occurring. 
Oh, Jesus Christ, Arch, you know someone's going to edit that out. Uh, it, it works well between nations that have the same economy, basically. Um, so, but, you don't mix orcs with your uh, elves and Warhammer, right? Yeah, but, but right? The, the thing is, That's like, exactly. it's a by nation. Like, Romania, for instance, is the second nation in the world with the, the biggest amount of immigrants, right? People just leaving. Um, and, and it's because my economy, uh, the, the economy of Romania is quite low, while, obviously, the economy of Germany is quite high, so people go into Germany to get jobs, and there, there's a huge population deficit here. Um, by the way, um, did you notice that Milo's account, PayPal account, got shut down? No, does that have to do with the whole journalism thing that happened? No, no, no. So, so I, I'll, I'll say the story really fast. It's, it's going to take sure. like one or two minutes, right? Sure. So there, there, there's this journalist at the New Yorker who finds out that the guy in a wheelchair has a tattoo and she thinks it's a Nazi tattoo. So she makes uh, the statement that the guy is a Nazi. Turns out that the tattoo was actually his uh, Marine Corps uh, tattoo <laughs> from, from fighting in Afghanistan. The guy stepped on an EAD and lost his legs, uh, and now he was working at ICE as a computer forensic, saving children from molestation, and he, he is also a, a, a winner at the Special Olympics, right? He's the one with the wheelchair. At any rate. Yeah. So, yeah, she gets, she gets obviously fired. Now, the reason she did this is obviously because they're trying to push the, the notion of America being like Nazi Germany because they're controlling the border. Which is absolutely retarded. But anyway, uh, basically what, what happens is she gets laid off and she tweets on Twitter that if anyone wants to give money, and, and this is her saying, right, it's not me, to a fat unemployed Jewish person, uh, they're going to be able to piss off Nazis because her existence pisses off Nazis or something like that. Uh, so Milo Annopoulos donates $14.88 to her. Uh, and because of that, PayPal then decides to shut down Milo's account because they consider that's like a dog whistling to, to white nationalists and other wow. other extreme organizations. <clears throat> that's interesting. Yeah, so they shut down a whole... P well, you know, a bunch of people probably got together and reported him. There was probably a campaign to report his well, it's, PayPal. He's, he's, he's getting banned. And by the way, this is the show that Milo... Uh, kind of ruined his career on which is kind of <laughs> ironic so yeah. he, he's he's got banned just because of the monetary amount that he donated that's ridiculous well, that is, uh, that's I kind of amazing no 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 he got banned because of a joke right and, and at this point i'm thinking maybe i should start an in insurance company for comedians because apparently right comedians should be like doctors you know like if you if you operate on ten thousand patients eventually you're going to make a mistake and therefore, you're going to hurt someone, so you need to have an insurance for malpractice, right? And it should be the same for comedians, because we noticed a trend with Count Dankula, Milo Yiannopoulos, and others. Comedians make 10,000 jokes a month, right? What, what if one of those jokes is offensive, and you're going to suffer financial damage? You're going to hurt someone, right? It, you need to have insurance. So Have instead of malpractice, it's law practice. I could have swore that there was something else going on with Milo recently, though, where I, I heard a claim that he said journalists should be killed or something. Yeah, I know, I know what happened, right? Okay, I'll, I'll keep you up to speed. Okay. Um, there, there's this guy, uh, Count Dankula. Yeah, we had him on Micha. the last episode. Yeah, Micha. Anyway, uh, I really love his name. Uh, he, he, uh, he got contacted by a journalist, right? A journalist was very asky. He was like, mwah, mwah, you know, like, can you give me an interview? Mwah, mwah, mwah. And uh, Dankula, obviously, you know, after three years, he understands how journalists work and says, yeah, sure, I'll give you an interview. You come on my channel. We live stream it, so don't take me out of context. And the guy obviously doesn't want to, right? And then makes the piece, slanders him, calls him like... Um, alt-right calls him neo-nazi and that type of shit you know the guy that has a hammer and sickle tattoo is now a neo-nazi uh, <laughs> so very disingenuous twat right and then he goes to milo asking the same thing so milo knew that the guy is going to call him a nazi so he trolled him and just said you know the thing that he expected it's like i can't wait to see you guys getting got down because if they're going to make a hit piece on him at least make it good <laughs> So someone did end up getting gunned down, though, right? Yes, uh, two days later, which was brilliant timing. I heard about that. Now that's commitment to a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, 
I I don't know. So he's he's taking the blame for that. I mean, but you know, I yeah, he, he mind controls people. He's like Charles Xavier, but a faggot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Charles Xavier is gay too. Just, just saying. No, he, <laughs> well, he had yeah, that yeah, Mora yeah. girl. He, How does that work? Like, the, the, does does one get on on the chair and starts bouncing? Like, that's, that's yeah. Good. So I want to go back to something I heard earlier. Uh, <laughs> Russians aren't white. Yeah, no, they're, they're not. It depends on who you ask. Someone would say they're that. slobs. I mean, yeah, yeah slobs. So, so Polish aren't white either. No, Poles, Poles can be uh, Poles are uh, whites because they saved Europe from the Turks during the siege of Vienna, so they're honorary <laughs> whites. <laughs> they're daywalkers. Uh, so, so Serbs, they're not, they're not white. Serbs are borderline. They have a long and proud history of shooting Muslims. Okay, so you gotta, no, the, you gotta the, kill the certain thing, people the, the to be white. white race. You the, gotta the fight. White race is, uh, is a new concept. Yeah, you, you, like can be a, you can be an honorary white if you've proven your service. But they're white. I mean, uh, they're they're definitely so are suicide uh, bombers they're, honorary they're whites. They're blonde-haired Russians, right? Uh, I mean, most Serbians no, no, are. No, the um, the, the thing is, like in in medical terms, we use ancestry, right? So. Uh, so no, Serbs, we're yeah. not speaking medicine now. We're speaking uh, <laughs> colloquialism, like right? Well, it, so it, yeah, Serbs. Colloquialism, like the, the idea of the white, uh, white as a race is quite recent. Um, in history, people would focus really hard on nationality. Like they, they you know, like between the, let's say, uh, Romanians and Hungarians, right? They, they would not consider themselves to have anything in common. Yeah, well, they share a border, which means there's probably a little bit of mixing between the two over all of the yeah, centuries it, it, that it you've been matter, neighbors. Though, right? I mean, the, 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 in, in Europe, at least, um, and this is the thing, like, most Americans don't understand this, but in Europe, uh, we don't consider ourselves a European family, if you will. This sure. is why the EU tries to push the European identity, and it doesn't work. I will say, you know, like in the Balkans, they, you know, the Slavic people that live down there, they still, you know, they, they were part of the Ottoman Empire. So there's probably a, a decent amount of Turkish in their, in their ancestry for any of those countries down there. If you go to Belgrade, you will see about a 50-50 mix of people you would consider white and people you would consider looking, you know, Ottoman Turkish. They they were under the control of the Turks for how many years? V, you know this. Your your country was enslaved <laughs> oh, Jesus by fucking them. Fucking Christ! Yeah, it was like a thousand of years or something like that. I don't know. It, it was a while. I, I mean, there's so many minorities that fuck my country that I lost count. I mean, the the Goths, the Ostrogoths, the Huns, the Tatars, the Ottoman Empire. You know, all these minorities coming and fucking get things over. Like I I, I forgot when, who came when. Well, it sounds yeah. like tradition. You only have your. <laughs> You you're, only you're have yourselves to blame. <laughs> you're talking about, you've got so many differences. You've got the Bosnians, you've got the Serbs, you've got now Montenegro. And the thing is, they're not divided only on heritage line, like nationality. They're divided on religion. They're divided on basic language. Faith, you know. There's so much of it then. That's why Yugoslavia doesn't work and collapses in massive yeah. civil war every time. So, uh, so are, are Greeks and Italians white? Well, if you were to ask my good friend Sargon, then no. Okay. Personally, I'm quite fond of the Italians. But not the Greeks. Well, here, here, here's how you tell if someone's white or not, okay? Okay. Get them to steal some shit, and if the police reports it on the station, we have a Caucasian male, then it's white. <laughs> That's a good That's, idea. That actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and, and, and you can tell they're not white because the people will just be shot, right? <laughs> you know, there's actually... Do you watch Dragon Ball Super? No, <laughs> I I've oh, seen yeah, it. There's a scene where where they're basically saying, "Hold on, that man, don't shoot that man. He's not black." Let me, let me see if I can find it <laughs> of the official translation. This is Dragon Ball. Hey, uh, yeah, Billy, you've know. been you've been living here in Seattle your whole life. Do you know how the giant uh, Vladimir Lenin statue ended up? Somebody bought it, uh, like on a eBay auction. <laughs> okay, Wait. it's on Skype. We we have a giant statue of Vladimir Lenin in our city here for some reason, and yeah, I, yeah, I it was, know, I it was originally it for some reason. Yeah, well, for some reason. Plan B. This is for everyone you've killed, England murderer. Hold your fire. This man isn't black. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 
<laughs> That's pretty hilarious. <laughs> what the fuck? Is that, that just taken out of context, or no? Story. It's a dub. It's oh, a dub. it's a dub. Okay. Yeah, yeah but it's a, it, it, it's the official dub, by the way. It's not that that is part of the storyline. It is. Uh, but bear in mind, in Japanese, kuro could also mean like guilty. So no, no, no. It's, oh, it's the man isn't guilty. Black, it, uh, kuro yeah. means black, and kuro can also mean guilty. No, so no, the, it's, the, it's actually they're interchangeable. It's black, as in the color. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go then. Amazing. You tried, tried to save it. You could have saved it. I'm going to go through some of these Streamlabs and Super Chats really quick before we move on to the next segment. Uh, Hypothy says $5. Kick V. Uh, and Oni Someone said Endo. He said Enonision too. Enonision isn't on here. Um, uh, someone said, oh, low energy videos, $5. Arch, thank you for your years of videos. I've listened to them on the treadmill and train. And while very drunk, also thanks for showing me Mech Warrior. Love that game. I like Mech Warrior too. Mech Warrior is a good game. Yeah, I like I I, I like all the the BattleTech based games. They've been pretty. They, you know, there's the first person kind, and then there's kind of like almost like a simulation of a tabletop, you know, turn based. Let's see. Uh, oh, Passionate Lobster, ten dollars. <laughs> Billy, why did you make Barbara sleep on the floor? You should have cut her up. Or, oh, you, you should have let her cut you up and sleep inside you like a tauntaun. I did let her do that, but she said... Uh, Is that why your butt was bleeding? Yeah. She she crawled... She bored her way into my anus. Uh, Mike for $1.99 says, V is a real ni uh, nigga, but he spelled it like 19... Or N199 at symbol. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Red 22 so when is Caden Cowger on the show? You know, he's a coward. I call him Caden Coward because uh, we asked him to come on and he just made excuses. So I, I have little to no respect for Caden Coward. Sorry. Um, coward. Just like G-Man can't help but say, uh, preach it to the choir ministries. Every time Ben says, all right, after the DP News intro without fail, just an observation. Hey, you know, we, we get we get comfortable saying certain things. A, a lot of people have crutch words. I have words that I lean on like a crutch. That's actually just his catchphrase. Yeah, yeah, you caught on to that. Let's see. Uh, Tucker White 94, maybe a wall stopped people in 1633, but in a world where boats and planes exist, how the fuck will a wall stop anything? Hey. Care to respond to that really quick? There's very few people who own either. The vast majority don't. The, okay, they the own wall boats? is not meant to stop people. It's meant to stop cars, I assume. Well, There's no, a it desert. Is. It, the thing is, the wall isn't going to stop <coughs> everyone, but it's going to stop quite a few people. Well, the wall who are going to look at a fucking wall of barbed wire on top and go like, no. They're not I even mean, planning on building the wall all the way across, right? People. Why does Zuckerberg have a wall around his mesh? Yes, <laughs> that's that's for that's to stop paparazzi. Here's a uh, Dex and other uh, <laughs> other cockroaches have much in common. <laughs> Dex Luther five dollars border wall caging illegals and sending them back or letting them in. It all seems to be band aids to the source problem. The conversation should be forced on Mexico and fixing its problems and asking the rest of the world to help if needed. Oh, well, I'm God. curious. About I, I the like the direction. idea. But can you imagine fixing Mexico? The cartels in there, you'd basically have to invade Mexico. Yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to say. Imagine the no-border activists reacting if America just parks its military in Mexico. Who's, who's <laughs> funding the cartels, though? American money, right? It's American money making the cartels in Mexico rich, correct? Yeah, but the thing is, they're already rich. Like, if you try to impar stop them now, you've got a literal war on your hands. So totally. wouldn't, wouldn't just legalization of drugs in the U.S. stop that in many ways? You still have meth, cocaine, heroin. I'm Unless fine you with want to le legalize that as well. I'm fine with legalizing it all, honestly. Yeah, um, but the thing is, like, people become really violent if they don't get the fix. I mean, we're well, all here, violent. Here. Like, do, do you really want the, the McDonald's cocaine burger? I don't yeah. know if that Didn't would happen. Fair. We used to... That the used shamrock to shake. I kid you not, during World War One, one of the um, 
uh, there's this hilarious police report from World War One Germany where they're basically going like, okay, we ran out of cocaine in the local drugstore and people are rioting. Yeah. <laughs> no, that that is why it's criminalized. I it's, mean, it's we, not the only that it's a thing. Like, like, here's the thing. But the you, criminalization you of it already them. leads to violence. We have violence that exists just because of the criminalization alone. Yeah, but that that, that would be worse. Like, like the thing is, you, but, you have no, no, no. Those. Hold on. This is a hypothetical you're giving me that maybe there might be a riot because of something, but we know for a fact the problems that you know prohibition <clears throat> causes. No, 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 let, 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 let me explain this, right? Okay. You you have substances that may cause addiction, right? Like alcohol, tobacco, like th these things. If you use responsibly, quote unquote, they they don't become addictive or if they become addictive they're not as dangerous right but you have cocaine heroin they, they actually attack the nervous system um and, and the problem is that you can't do cocaine responsibly so so the thing is like if you sure you can no you can't there's plenty what of people you that can't use do cocaine co responsibly i mean there's plenty That's, of people that use cocaine wall street responsibly from, from the from the 80s until now wall street is all about responsible cocaine use the thing is, if people, the patients that are addicted to cocaine, if they don't get their fix, they become really violent. Well, yeah, and, and the thing is, if we control the cocaine and the money from the cocaine sales isn't going to the cartel, it can go to people here that, that have uh, resources for those who are addicted. We can funnel that money, that the, the ta we can tax all that drug money and take care of our <laughs> people rather than put the money in the hands of fucking uh, uh, yeah, cause, I mean, criminals. We're, and, we're and, taking care of them in prison anyway. We're spending money on them no matter what. Yeah, but here's an issue then. This is I'll be interested to hear the answer to this. Let's say that somebody doesn't have the money to buy more cocaine. You know, he comes upon hard times or something, and due to the effect of the drug, he becomes violent. Like it's proven to be this is a medical effect. And he commits a crime, a violent crime. How do you then judge him? Because he did so under we, the effect well, hold on. of drugs. this is this is assuming that way more people are gonna use cocaine just because it's legal. I don't believe legality is a is a is a deterrent for people using drugs. If someone wants to use it, they'll use it. I, every drug I've ever used in my life I was never like, oh man, I you know, this is illegal. Should I do this or not? No. I did it because I wanted to do it. Well, you know, no, it, it will be used more because bit. the history of cocaine shows that when it was legal, it was used in far larger quantities. So I think that's yeah, a it, it, is, it is a highly addictive drug. Like for instance, marijuana it is. is not is not as addictive as cocaine. Not to mention, it's not even as harmful. Right. So so you do have drugs that are banned that could be uh, un unrestricted, but then you have things like meth and cocaine that literally destroy lives. Um, and the, the major issue with them, as I said before, is that people become very violent when they don't get their fix. And, and that's why we just get them their fix. They, they, they go to a cocaine resource <clears throat> center. Right now we have heroin resource centers all throughout Seattle. For decades we've been doing this. And that's why our homeless population is so huge here in Seattle. Because the homeless can do heroin all fucking day, get brand new needles and be put out on the, the streets high as hell, happy as hell. But, <laughs> but we instead of focusing on the, 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 the criminal aspect of them doing the drugs, we can focus on the druggies becoming the criminals when they actually do the violent attacks and the stealing to get their shit. That's when we bring I the law I say the in. prohibition causes more violence than any hypothetical well, violence that let, let, a few let, extra let's people... Let's put it this way. Let, let's put it this way. Why, why is that almost every nation in the world banned these things, right? Because when you had, like, prohibition of alcohol, that was an American thing, mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, but, for but 10 with, years with, with it was drugs, illegal. With, with the drugs, you, you, you still have, like, uh, nations that sell marijuana or maybe, you know, they, they sell some, I believe, acid, right? I, I'm not an expert when it comes to this shit, but uh, cocaine and heroin are banned almost universally. Sure. But people, so, uh, I mean, it's still being used and it's still getting into the country and then it's it's making yeah, but, 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 criminals but that's, that's rich. Not an argument. That, that's not a good argument because we also ban murders when there's still people being killed. Well, well, that's a totally reason. different. Can, can you murder? Hold on, no, 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 no. Hold on. It's not the same thing. One, one is a, one is a crime against oneself, and one is a crime against someone else. So that's not really a good comparison. No, no, no. The, the yeah, but the if principle. the drug makes you more likely to commit a kind of crime against somebody else, the, the I, but that's here. already happening. Then, then you get charged with that crime you commit. And we, no, then we can focus on we can focus on the criminals rather than the the drug abusers. Going past something important, right? Okay. The principle is. Just because there's a law against it doesn't mean you won't stop the, the phenomenon from happening, right? So, for instance, in the example that I gave, it's illegal to murder someone, but you still have murderers. 
Right? Just because you have murderers doesn't mean you sh it shouldn't be illegal to kill people. Now, <clears throat> another example would be speeding, right? Like just because you're speeding doesn't mean you're killing anyone, but you're just it's illegal because you risk killing Pe someone. So people speed all the time and get yeah. away with it. Yeah, the thing is that like there are laws that um, because you're endangering people, it's illegal to do that thing. Right, uh, but so, but so, so but when you're when you're doing cocaine, you're not endangering anyone else. Yeah, you're only no, endangering you're yourself. We can fixed, still enforce right? the laws. You're not getting the cocaine. Is you're endangering. And That's a hypothet. You you okay? You're you're saying for sure. Like if I can't get cocaine, I'm gonna harm other people. But there's no way. There's no way to prove that. And that's why we'll have resource centers once the drugs are legalized. Yeah, you can have a resource center for people that can't know, get or, the cocaine. Or crossing a red light just, just because you're like it's a hypothetical. Like technically, if you if you're speeding and you're crossing a red light, you might commit the car crash, which is why it's illegal. And and that's we why we don't we don't have a know. prohibition like, on we vehicles. Know the side effects of cocaine. Uh, basically, what it does is. It increases your heart rate, uh, muscle mm -hmm. spasms, convulsions, etc. drastically. This is likely to make you feel more paranoid, angry, hostile, anxious. And that's beside the other side effects that can just kill you, like randomly stopping your heart. Sure. Yeah. That drinking and driving is another example, right? Why, why, why do people go to jail for it? Because so, hypothetically... So the answer... So, so those things are true, but... So the answer to that is... We pay to lock people up for doing it, and then we let the the money go to Mexico so the cartels can run the show in Mexico. I think the problem is then Mexico. Because yeah, if Mexico yeah. wasn't there providing cheap drugs... Mexico is not going it. away. <laughs> I mean, it's not going I, away. I, I am willing, I'm willing to bet that there's more cocaine in the United States than there is in Europe, and uh, it's sure. illegal in both countries. Well, where does the cocaine come from? It comes from our side of the world. Yeah, the, I mean, the, the it comes from South that America. The problem in America is the poor enforcement of the border, so build a fucking wall. Like, the, the cocaine doesn't come in people's pockets. I assume it's with cars. If you'd have a wall no, over there. No, boats. It's most, it mostly comes from tunnels. Tunnels, um, boats, airplanes. Yeah, but the tunnels can't... Like, you, you, you can't send people to find out where the tunnels are, I assume. Like, we do have technology... To you know, like motion sensors and shit like that. That Saudi Arabia has. Yeah, at this you point, can tunnels, yes. sure, they can. They can be discovered. Usually, they open in a building, and uh, like both both openings are in a building wherever they are. Um, mm. But we'll we'll move on and, and read some more of these here. Uh, Dex Luther, Bo oh, oh, we already read that one. Uh, let's see. We still have landmines here in in the Falkland Islands after the war. No one has been blown up in 36 years, and we don't go where the fucking mines are. I mean, there you go. I mean, that it, may it be needs true. To be plastic mines as well, by the but, way. Those are literally illegal, sadly. I, I know. Uh, well, if if you're going to do something inhumane, might as well go all the way. But the problem is, when America finally gets enough of Mexico's shit and invades, they're not going to be able to find the landmines anymore. There's, I, I don't you think there's a good chance of that children. happening. You can send children to my sweep. I mean, they could, the but yeah, could. The invading Mexico would be such a drain. I mean, first of all, we don't like to fight wars on our own land, or or even like a country that borders us. And it would it would cost so much money to to take over and <laughs> occupy Mexico. It. it yeah, but think about this. You, you you would finally please the no border activist, right? Because it's like, well, if there's no <laughs> border, then we're not invading shit. <laughs> to be fair, if we're talking purely imperialistic terms, <laughs> U.S. totally should invade Mexico. It's cheaper than invading <laughs> fucking Iraq or Iran or any of that shit. It is. It is cheaper, but it does pose more risk to us in the sense that. I mean, there would. I mean, we see people protesting ICE now. Uh, imagine uh, don't invade Mexico protest. How crazy that yeah, would get. You, you can literally say it's like, well, we're citizens of the world. Mexico just has to pay to the world government, which happens to be the United States. <laughs> I love that argument, V. Next time you need to invade a country, we're all citizens of the same world. You just happen to be on ours. Sorry. <laughs> Beautiful. Love it. Here's uh, $5 from Large Marge. Uh, you nationalists are all the same, always blaming your own inadequacies on everyone else. Uh, hypothesis. I, I think he was talking to you guys. I don't know. I, I think so, though. Yeah, are, well, are you... we are civic nationalists. But, but, but like, honestly, 
the, the whole reason they're coming to America is because of the welfare, right? So the American taxpayer is paying for some for, for the, their welfare because it, it doesn't come from anywhere. It doesn't come from an American's ass. It's coming from the taxpayer. And, and you have people coming in that aren't paying into the system and want to benefit from the system. How is that fair? I would say you know, mostly, it, mostly <laughs> what they do is the, the under... <laughs> The undocumented work that they can find in the U.S. is still better than whatever work they can find in Mexico. That's yeah, not I mean, justifying. The, the thing is, like, I looked at the statistics, right? So technically, it is good for the economy because you're getting cheap labor, but it's bad yes. for the working class. It is bad for, for the p people that can't find the job besides, uh, you know, manual labor or, you know, things that you don't need a higher education. They're the ones that are suffering. And it's not really good for the economy either. It's good in the short term for individuals, yes. But the increase in unemployment basically means that in the long term, it is a drain on the economy. Not to mention the, the benefits, medical insurance, further education, which it amazes me how many NGOs are there specifically to provide these things like Medicare and education to people who are illegal in the U.S., yeah, and, and, and don't uh, don't even forget when the automatization is going to happen. Like, more and more jobs are disappearing because of uh, robots appearing in, in their place. All, all, all these people are going to be in America, you know, doing what? Like, sitting on welfare, I guess. No, robots we'll, will replace we'll you. Find, we'll find work for them. <laughs> yeah, until robots start uh, roofing and landscaping and uh, cooking. And, and, and also, at the end of the day, Right. You, even if it would be the best thing that for the economy, it's still fucking illegal. When, when did we start negotiating laws? When when did we end like you know what? We this always negotiated laws. Yeah, I mean they're, yeah, they're, 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 they're about, Senate, they're about Senate, to have a right? Tijuana like, Tea Party, dude. If if if, if they want to change the law, they should do it through the legal system and say you know what, like anyone can come into America, and then they change the law. But but until then. It's illegal to have the border. Anyone that does it is a crime, and they should be punished. There's no conversation to be had about it. Well, there is a lot of conversations to be had about uh, criminal activity and the punishment for, for criminal activity, right? Like, uh, we, we, we could be uh, too strict of a society. The, the, the conversation yeah, but, but, is... is... No, no, my point, my point is that the conversation should happen in the Senate, right? And the conversation should happen by, by the legislators and the lawmakers. You, you don't, like, like the law is the law. People who break the law get sent to jail or, or they get sent, in their case, apparently immigrants are privileged. They don't get sent to jail. They send they, they get to be sent back home. I, I'm actually curious, what, what happens if you're a tax evader and you're an illegal? Do you get sent back home or do you send to an American prison? I mean, I think a lot of illegals are tax evaders yeah. because they don't have social security numbers or anything like that. So. Of course, yeah. Some of How them pay you... taxes, but most of them don't, I guess. So, so what happens to them? Do, do they go to prison or do they go to to a, to, a, to Mexico? I mean, whatever job I, they're I working doesn't pay enough for the taxes that they owe to even really be significant. Ultimately, anyway. they would get I would deported. Say, I would say send them home. They would. Yeah, but he, here's the thing, right? Here's how they fuck the working class. How much is the entire tax in, in America? Is it like 50% or... We, we, we have a tax rate that is based upon how much money you make. The more money you make in a year, the more percentage but what, you pay. What is the lowest bracket? Oh, wow. Let me see. It changes all the time. Let's see. Let, 20... Let's say it's 30%, right? Let, let's 20. say it's 30%. Um, now, the thing is, I, I'm going to take a completely rounded down number just for the easier... The lowest the one... Let's... By the way, uh, just just so you know, the lowest one is twelve percent, and that's people making between uh, nine thousand five hundred dollars and thirty eight thousand dollars in a year. Okay. Now let, let let's say that is nothing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I know. But, but but the thing is, that we're going to round that down and just make arbitrary numbers. So let's say a thousand dollars per month, right? <clears throat> yeah. Because it's with zero. Now let's say the tax is thirty percent. Uh, the thing is. An American citizen is going to look at it and is going to say, I need to pay the taxes because otherwise I'm going to jail. And he, he's going to look at that and is going to say, even though the wage is $1,000, at the end of the month, I'm going to have $700 in hand. Uh, so he's going to say, well, I can't pay the bills with that. And he's going to choose not to, not to take the job. Meanwhile, you have someone else that's looking at it, and it's like, well, I'm not going to pay taxes for it, so it's $1,000, I'm going to have $1,000 in the pocket. Yeah. 
So, so you know, they're going to say, oh, Americans are lazy. They don't want to do the job. No, they're getting paid less for the same job because they're paying the taxes like idiots. Meanwhile, you have someone else that doesn't pay the taxes because you can say, well, first of all, the government doesn't know I exist. He, he's not registered. He doesn't like that's why it's undocumented, right? He doesn't have documents. Secondly, if I'm caught, I'm getting sent back. I'm not going to go to a prison. So for him, it's it's a good deal. Like there, there is not no incentive for him to pay the taxes, is there? Well, that's the. I mean, they, they they can't pay the taxes, right? So so they don't pay the taxes. So we lose that tax revenue, and then we send them to prison and pay to keep them alive in prison with more tax revenue. Pretty much. Uh, people in the chat are saying I'm ignorant. Like, what, what, where exactly is the logical inconsistency of what I'm saying? Like, I, obviously, I, there are people that pay taxes. You know, that there are illegals that pay taxes. But we know that there are a lot of them who don't. Yeah. I would say being sent to Mexico yeah. in, in many ways is probably worse. We'd basically, you'd, you'd have to change the law because currently you literally can't send them back without going through the entire legal sure. system, basically. So that would be where it starts. Alternatively, you could go for the German solution, but that's a bit more uh, no. extreme. Yeah, yeah, that's way more extreme. Oh, I mean, dude, I'm, I'm you, fine. You, I'm fine with them having, you know, human rights and being treated fairly when we catch them. But the the entire due process. I mean, okay. Well, obviously, we want to prove that they're illegal. That has to be proven because we don't want to deport someone who is legal. But if there was a way they could speed up that process to send them back, that I think that would be better than sending them to prison. Well, let me tell you an actual human rights issue that no one wants to talk about. Right. Uh, <laughs> The, the, the fact that the corporations are treating them like indentured servants. Right? It, it, the, the moment they, they get hired at a corporation, um, if the corporation, let's say, if the boss says, yeah, we're going to work 12 hours a day rather than a day, who are they going to complain? Are, yeah. are they going to, to go to the police and say that? Like, I heard the, a story from a friend of mine that was working uh, at one of these places, and he said that he asked a migrant to... Uh, uh, to, to clean machinery while the machinery was running, which yeah. obviously is illegal, right? Yeah. And he, the guy lost his arm. Now, the uh, the company was angry at him, and they were screaming at him as if it was his fault. Uh, and, and, like, well, what exactly was he supposed to do? The, the moment he goes to the authorities, he's going to be deported. So, no, that's, so that's a very big problem with corporations taking advantage of the Yeah, do you see this workforce. on CNN? Do you see this on MSNBC? Do you see any of the uh, news anchors being abhorred by, by the poor treatment? No, of course not. Because the companies are the ones that are lobbying for this cheap labor force that they can abuse. You don't have to improve working condition for these people. You don't even have to pay the minimum wage. We're going to move on and, and read a few more of these here. Uh, we have hypothesis uh, about the DBZ clip. They said they were probably they were probably saying he wasn't Goku Black, an evil doppelganger in that uh, Dragon Ball Z Super episode. What context? Nah. <laughs> context <laughs> impossible. Uh, Newton, ten dollars. The reason social justice warriors virtue signal is not because they see bigotry everywhere. It's because they want to bait good people into joining their uh, their cause and then stab them in the back after they get what they want. Machiavelli, one oh one. Stay woke. Whoa. Uh, let's see. When did you guys get corpse midget on? Oh, they're saying V sounds like corpse midget. It's because they're both <laughs> Romanian. They're both Romanian, so they have a similar accent. Uh, Sean Kenny for $2. Black is the name of the character. Also, V sucks. Uh, Como, five, Como Freak, $5. Is it me or does V sound like Melania Trump? I don't think he sounds like Melania Trump. I think Trump. he looks like Melania. No. Uh, oh, smash. No, plus <laughs> Melania is Slovenian, so uh, Barbara would sound more like Melania Trump than V would. Hmm. Uh, Slain Hope, $5. Uh, an anime Street Cred, minus over 9000 I didn't know there was <laughs> such a thing as Anime Street Cred. Damn. Uh, Aaron P, $10. Arch, I love the vids. I was literally watching Battletech before the stream. Have you heard of all the Guardsmen Party? How many people like you, Arch? Jesus. I'm a popular person. All the Guardsmen Party. No, I have not. I have not of that. Let's see what else we got. Hypothesis, $5. Uh, 
V and Arch are clearly shills for Pepsi. Ooh. Uh, I would love to be a shill for Pepsi. <laughs> Anti-Coke. Low energy Sounds videos well five. Paid. <laughs> Low energy videos five dollars. Arch, talk about the Sabat Crusade for nine hours. You know, a short video. Also, Ben, would you ever think of getting critical on the show or going on the official podcast? I maybe. I don't know who critical is is but i i guess i'll look them up it's a pretty big youtuber what so, is the official podcast i don't know it's critical's podcast is it yeah oh so you know who critical is yeah i'm familiar yeah and then como freak asked for five dollars is v american uh no no i'm, I'm interested <laughs> in, uh, no I, I like world politics and the thing is like because i'm not american i actually have an objective view on this because i don't have a horse in this race do you think, though, uh, American politics has an influence on at, at least the the Western world to, to quite a great degree? Oh, well, absolutely. Like, especially that the economy is so interconnected. Like, when you guys had the banking crisis, it, uh, yeah. it affected my, my country here as well. So, <clears throat> Yeah, I noticed currencies all over the world got devalued when that happened. Yeah, yeah, no, you, you, See, th this is what I find funny. It's like... Uh, you you see journalists going, oh, America is isolating itself. Like, bitch, America doesn't isolate itself. America isolates others. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I believe it was at the G, G6. It's like, oh, yeah, America uh, is isolating themselves from the rest of the G6. No, no, America can isolate the G6 from itself. Like, it, it's such a colossal powerhouse, economic powerhouse, that it can isolate the rest of the world, quote-unquote. If you know what I mean. That's why it's important that our economy doesn't get fucked up again to the degree it did. Uh, we're going to move on. This is this is uh, a less serious segment. Uh, oh. The crazy people segment. So, what do we have here? Oh man, this video did not download properly. Is he's the marshmallow man. He's like frozen. I'm gonna play a different one. <laughs> Is this Ricky Berwick's dad? Dude. <laughs> oh my god. If as if the heavy breathing wasn't enough. His plumber crack is on. Oh, he's got the Jergens in the background by the table too. This guy is next level fucking creepo. Why? Why would you film this video and upload it on the internet? Oh. Uh oh. Tell me, tell me he's not gonna. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Not, yeah. What I, not what I expected, but okay. He's yeah. about to get his fuck on. <laughs> this guy made a video of him dancing and no matter what music i play to it his dancing is perfect it was music amazing every time. actually it was well, amazing how the, well uh, can, it was. can you play the um attack on titan theme song with this I wonder if his dancing will line Let's up see. in this. And why does he really have the Jergens right next to his fucking chair there? He's just he just sits around and jacks off and dances all day. I guess uh, I'd be I'd be overweight too if I did that. Wait. It's almost like he's exercising at this point. He's not even Yeah, he's not dancing uh, in this one. Oh, crap. <laughs> he does look like in the nine month of pregnancy. I'll give yes. That. Yes. He, he, needs, he needs a longer shirt. I wonder how much he weighed when he bought that shirt. <laughs> probably the same. No. That probably fit him at one point. And then he sat around eating fucking peanuts and jerking off with Jergens and... and shit rapping all day and his gut just got bigger and bigger to the point where he can't even pull his pants above his ass crack or his shirt below his gut he has this equator of of uh lord it is weird how he has a a, a fucking giant bottle of lotion next to his recliner Dude. there oh my god you, you remind me about the fire challenge <laughs> what is it the fire challenge 
I, I would say it's people, but it, it was actually black people setting themselves on fire, right? We, and some of them used the lotion um, in order, like they would drop it on their skin and then set it on fire. So the idea of the challenge was to set yourself on fire, then jump into water or some shit, right? Um, and some people died because of it. Some people were hospitalized, so the challenge stopped being like you. You can go on YouTube and just go fire challenge, and, and you will see people. That, yeah, and then like th there were people like you after the fire challenge going like, oh my god, that is so horrible, you should not do it. It's like, yeah, I, I, I think some things don't need to be said. Like, some people that do it would do it regardless. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, people were eating Tide Pods for a while, too. I mean, that's just ridiculous. And I didn't start uh, using Tide Pods until people started eating them, and they're wonderful. I love them for laundry use. I, I, so that was a good advertisement for Tide yeah. Pods. If any kids died eating Tide Pods, I want to thank you for your sacrifice because now I use it in my laundry and I smell summer fresh every day. <laughs> Snorting condoms was another big thing. You know, I'm die from that. Well, yeah, but, uh, but kids, kids always do stupid stuff. Uh, ever since Superman was around, they started jumping off roofs. You know, I think that was the beginning of kids doing stupid things. Yeah, didn't you say because you watched wrestling as a kid, you gave your sister a pile driver? Yeah, and I wasn't allowed to watch wrestling for like <laughs> seven years. I got I got pulled away from wrestling from when I was five until I was like twelve. Did, did you injure her? Like did you did you do some damage over there? I don't think I did. I think that my parents just saw it and that's, freaked out. That's one move that they don't even let wrestlers do to each other anymore yeah. because people have broken their necks from it. So that's just crazy. You could say I was really? a child Jeez. prodigy. Holy shit. <laughs> no, you, you need this with attack on Titan music. He hasn't been dancing yet, so I don't know if it would line up the same. Yeah, he's like, there's one where he's doing like a like a, <laughs> he's doing like the Running Man or something. Do, do we? Does this guy actively upload all the time? Yes, he does. Can we get him on the show? I don't want him on the show. Oh my god! <laughs> Can you imagine having a conversation with this guy? I think he'd just whip his dick out halfway through and start jerking off. No thanks. Yeah, I, I that's don't why want I don't that. want him. Yeah, you can't see his dick. That's the problem. I, th I think he's he's one of those faith masturbators where you you masturbate by faith. I used to be one. What do you mean by faith? Masturbate where by you faith. just how, reach how you, you reach down and just start smacking around whatever's down there. You you might oh, not be able I to see, see. You might you might might not be able to see the god, but you can still pray to him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I I know about the flower test on women that look like this. You just drop the flower and wherever it's moist, that's the spot. <laughs> <laughs> see, I was thinking like a, a flower in a garden at first, but then. Nope. Beer battered pussy. I'm going to move on and we're going to play a, a video here that basically claims that the Incredibles 2 movie is satanic and, and is attacking God. Is it Mario? Yeah. Is oh, so all right. Here we Jesus. <laughs> this guy, this guy thinks everything's satanic. Morning, it's TBC Mario. No, he, he doesn't think you. everything is satanic. He thinks anything on the YouTube trending tab is satanic. Yeah, because he's a fucking scam artist. He is satanic, perpetuating evil so he can get his fucking views on whatever's trending. Good job, vigilant Chris Chan. Or a video That's I awesome. needed to make to go ahead and talk about this: how the Incredibles two movie actually subliminally attacks God. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yesterday I recognized so many brothers and sisters in Christ who were praising this movie, encouraging their Christian friends to go ahead and check it out. This is so incredible. The Incredibles are incredible. I, I really hate this identity politics bullshit. It's like, you're a Christian, you're not supposed to watch this movie. Why? Because a faggot that talks for Christianity said so. You know, it's not Jesus Christ that came down and says... Yeah, by the way, you shouldn't watch The Incredibles 2 because it's Satan. No, is that faggot with a YouTube account that said good Christians don't watch that shit? You want to be a good Christian, don't you? Therefore, don't yeah. watch it. No, they're incredibly anti-Christ. And if you were able to discern, you would know that the entire movie is to, well, attack the traditional family in God's order in the Bible. Oh, wow. Well, that, if that's the case, then I should not be able to watch television at all. To be fair, he has a point. A family of <laughs> superheroes where all of them have special abilities is not the traditional family. This is correct. <laughs> <laughs> so in today's video, we're going to go ahead and discuss this because Christians, it's time to wake up and truly be vigilant against the enemy. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is how yesterday I discussed a concept that is again relevant 
in today's video. And that is today the church has a very, very big lack of discernment. Modern day Christians are incapable of, as the Bible would say, spiritually discerning evil. This is why so many Christians today have no <laughs> do, they, do they get like, when, when they level up, do they get the spell detect evil? Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> most Christians are incapable of discerning evil because they're all following it. Oh, snap. No, see, the way I find it works is like you, you get someone on uh, on trial, right? And he's on the stand, and it's like, okay, we can't tell if he's lying or not. Bring forth the Christian. You know, and the Christian <laughs> walks in, he looks at the guy, and he's like, he's evil. You know, it's like, ah, oh, guilty. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Guilty. No problem going and consuming <laughs> Hollywood media. If you think Hollywood is good for the modern Christian, do yourself a favor right now. Go to Good Fight Ministries and go check out the Hollywood, uh, Hollywood's War on God documentary and educate yourself. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> to be fair, right. Hollywood no, media on. isn't good for anyone. Yeah, he, he is absolutely right when it comes to this from a Christian point of view. But what the fuck is there to watch? Like, like the thing that I that I hate about. Again, this this type of rhetoric where where it's like extremely radical. Everything that's not Christian is bad, you know. Like anything that's not permissible is a sin type of mentality. And there's right. no more fun in life. You're not supposed to watch Hollywood. You're not supposed to watch books. You're not supposed. Like, the the correct mentality from a Christian would be: you should know that the movies are against the traditional family and shit like that. Don't do what's in the movies. And as long as you know that, you should still be able to watch them because they're just for entertainment. Yeah, he uh, basically anytime there's something big uh, that's been released as far as media goes, he calls it satanic. Uh, you yeah. know, the the Super Bowl halftime show had satanic imagery in it. You know, it's always just whatever is on the trending topics. Right. He just takes what's trending. And sometimes he even shows you in the video. Like there was a video he did on the gorillas. The gorillas were <coughs> trending. He was like, the gorillas uh, are actually satanic. They have an album called Demon Days. And the, 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 the fucking album is called Demon Days for a reason. They have satanic imagery in the fucking art because it's based on s demons and shit. It's supposed can, to be. Can, can you imagine the research he does before the video? <laughs> Like he, right. he actually takes the band gorillas and tries to do research. Like, where, but let's see, let's see, where's the Satan? Where's ah? Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he sees Satan everywhere he looks. So, well, you can find Satan in anything because you can find God in anything. You can find bullshit in anything. You can bullshit your way through fucking uh, 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 Jim Baker. I can find you some satanic shit in a, a Baker bucket commercial. Yeah, I mean, maybe this guy is trolling, but I, I know people like him because I grew up in an evangelical school. Well, no, no, people think he's trolling. Like him. He's not that trolling. Takes away from Jesus is a he's, he's not trolling. He's manipulating Christians because Christians are in constant fear of Satan seeping into their child's fucking life through the form of uh, whether it be the Incredibles or Warhammer or whatever the fuck it is. They're worried about Satan coming and taking their little Timmy off to the fucking Never Never Land, but that's not going to happen. Is, is Warhammer satanic art? Well, I mean, it does have an entire separate universe filled with demons, so probably. <gasps> oh, <gasps> shit. <laughs> Going to hell. Hollywood yeah, has been I, promoting... I the, the, the whole thing is about control, right? Because anything that takes away from church and Jesus is a problem. Like, they, they want you to spend all your free time praying, going to church... Because yeah. then you have faggots like this guy that's controlling other Christians, right? Like he's getting power by telling you what to do, so you need to look up to him to get guidance. So it's Don't... in his interest that you're a firm believer, so that he can guide you and he can be the the one that has authority over other Christians. Don't they teach <coughs> religion in Romanian public schools? I believe I've heard that before. Yeah, they, they do. They do. Yeah. Well, this guy, this guy just wants to get as many views and uh, subscribers as possible because it's his his job. He's said in many of videos, YouTube is his job. Well, he also said he used to work at a bank, and and credit card debt is satanic. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. How, how many like didn't Jesus says give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar or stuff like that? Yeah. How, how many subscribers does he have? Oh, he has a million. Yeah, yeah, it's like four to five hundred thousand, something like that. Jesus. Yeah. There are a lot of crazy people out there. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. 
He said originally he was inspired by Mark Dice and Alex Jones. So that's kind of where like he's Alex coming Jones from. Alex Jones is turning in his bed right now going, <laughs> <laughs> Gnostic satanic principles in their movies for a long time. And Pastor Joe Schimmel is going to help you realize that. Too many of you have your head in the sand and consume modern day media, not recognizing I how damaging Muslims to like your that, soul. That they're praying. They look like Muslims praying. <laughs> yeah, but they're they're they they can't all be facing Mecca, so some of them are at least yeah, that, doing that it. That is wrong. true. One, one is praying inaccurately. Yeah. <laughs> Prayer. It truly is. So get educated, my brothers and sisters. I say this to you in love. Now. One thing we need to recognize about the enemy is that he is subtle. In Genesis chapter 3, <coughs> verses uh, 1, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And the word subtle is actually a term that means crafty, prudent. He is shrewd. And so we're not going to see the... What talking about? They're open. They're, they're so open right. about the fact that they're against the family. Like, Hollywood I'm talking about. They're, they're so open that they're pro-LGBT, that they're against the traditional family. There's no subtlety in it. There's, there's no subtlety. Right. <laughs> you know, just ask them. <laughs> Fucking ask them. Enemy attacking us in the most obvious of fashion. But if we're able to recognize his subtle attacks, we will be able to be vigilant and be able to overcome the Satan's devices as they're described the in Satans? scriptures that we the Satan's the Satans. plural there are more than one not that I'm aware of I mean uh, the Bible talks about several demons but Satan I believe is is one individual so in, in the Old Testament he was a good guy like in the Old Testament he was actually friends with God well he was an um, angel yeah he was an angel and it's just in the New Testament that's like you know what this book needs in the sequel. Let, let's have a bad guy. Like <laughs> <laughs> we, we need a turn. We we need someone to turn against God that used to be on his side. Damn. We shouldn't be ignorant of. There's always a fruit when it comes to Satan. He will create order. Uh, sorry, God will create order. <laughs> Why not edit that out? <laughs> because yeah, because Mario makes fucking lo low. Um, Energy content, low, low, he doesn't, he doesn't put work in I mean, if shit. this was a live stream, I'd understand, you know, he misspoke. But when it's a pre-recorded video, he should be able to edit that out in He's one second. Shit. It looks kind of bad, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it was some sort of Freudian slip, I think. Honestly, he's saying so much shit, like, I could make a better video than him. Well, <laughs> at this point, I think he has to make... Soccer. He has to make a video on himself saying the vigilant Christian is satanic because he just uh, misattributed. Other people have. <laughs> other people, like other yeah. Christians that kind of believe the same thing he does think he's a secret Satanist. So, well, all he does have a pentagram. Yeah. Oh, by the way, does, oh. Satan, does Satan have succubi? I don't know. Does God I, have succubi? I don't think so. Then I'm going to go for Satan because there's more chances of getting succubus. <laughs> a, a succubus? Yeah, yeah. So the Lord has concubines and Satan has succubi? succubi? I guess so. That's fucked up. I don't. <laughs> I should be the other way around, shouldn't it? For be? real. Yeah. Satan <laughs> is all about chaos. And especially when you see the direct order of God under attack, you know that's satanic. The pentagram is a symbol to show inversion that Satan well, desires to invert with the circle figure. The, it's it's this is an upside down pentagram. The I mean that's that's a different type of symbolism than if it's right side up. Oh yeah, so. into esoteric lore now. Like you, you, you know the uh, the secret code. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's just like anything. When when you take a symbol and invert it, it means the opposite of what it means when it's no, right okay. side up. That, that's right. I, I like the that. American flag upside down. Yeah, or yeah. or the crucifix upside down, or even even when Hitler took the swastika, he tilted it. It wasn't it, like the traditional swastika is almost like a square. Yeah, I know, I know. It's still banned in Germany, by the way. Eels are reversed. It. The, the, there Bert. are mangas that can't sell in Germany because they have the Buddhist symbol by it. Yeah, Damn. yeah. Damn Germany. <laughs> Keep yeah. me from my mangas. It is it was originally like a Buddhist symbol and even some uh, you know, Native American <coughs> tribes used a, a symbol that looked like a swastika too. Yeah. And uh 
literally make good into evil and evil into good in the perceptions of people out there. This is an agenda. And in Incredibles 2, the attack comes. <laughs> this is the natural order of your family, okay? And, and the roles. The roles are written so you know what you're supposed to do. I'm glad that they I, used I umbrellas. The my wife doesn't have a direct connection to Jesus. <laughs> and, yeah, she goes through Jesus through her husband. Submit to husband's authority. That means give up the pussy whenever he wants it. That's what that means. Yeah. To the traditional family. God has an order. And I've talked about this in many videos. This is not wait, something... I, I, I just want to say, there, there's nothing wrong with the traditional family. I'm, I'm actually for it. But I don't think the Christian the, the Christians have a monopoly of the traditional family. It's it's true. I'm for it if people want to do it. If people well, want to have an untraditional family, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with doing whatever they want to do. There is something wrong with the traditional family in America today. The, you you can't afford to have a traditional family in America today. <gasps> oh, you can't, oh, because the the wife has to work now. The wife has to work. So now that the wife has to work, these oh, her yeah, yeah, being yeah, yeah, a I, subservient. I for you, traditional family means like the the, the wife stays at home. Um, yeah, yeah, like, like the, the reason uh, the wife stay, stood at home is because America afforded the economy for the wife to stay at home. But in Europe, for instance, especially in Eastern Europe, the wife has to work. Like like back in the day, you you had to go to the river to wash the clothes. You you had to cook dinner, mop the floors. Like all of this was a daytime job. Now you have a vacuum cleaner, you have a washing machine. There's no excuse for someone to stay at home. Well, now people Both have nannies, nannies yeah, and yeah. housekeepers. Well, too. you can't afford to have somebody stay at home anymore. Having nannies and housekeepers, it would it would be great if your wife could stay at home and you wouldn't have to buy a nanny or a housekeeper. Instead, she has to go get a job that pays more than the fucking you pay for the nanny to do the same shit she would be doing. So that's that's the problem we have with a traditional family in America. Is it just it's not it's not realistic anymore. Yeah, but traditional family, I imagine man married to a woman and there there is the marriage, right? And, it, and this is the best way society But what's has the point of marriage? Children. What's the point of marriage anymore? Hack raise children. It, well, no, like, like the idea is to raise children. It's the best environment to raise children. I don't know. I hear good things about the uh, cages down in uh, at, the, at the border. <laughs> but you notice here in in this diagram that he's showing, it, it says under husband provide for the family. Yeah. So he's pushing that. And so this natural order of the family would work if we still had a world where this could work. We just don't live in the world where this works anymore. Right. The husband well, can't provide on his own. Yeah, there might be some rich fucks that can afford it. Uh, well, of course, but fair, that's the one percent. Family and the wife stays at home. Like most of the time, she will be happy. But if you have a family where the wife works and the husband stays at home, you will see the husband being very frustrated. Uh, Not always. There's actually, know a couple of cases. Where well, that that's happens. that's a couple of I cases. Mean, even, but even the even the very rich ones still hire nannies anyway. Yeah. And housekeepers. And there's a lot. Yeah. I know a lot of stay-at-home dads that are happy and they they, they run what? their children. Oh yeah, I, I I know a lot there, and they they instill values in their children the same way that you know uh, the, the, maybe other dads that are working all the time wouldn't. It's just it's just a, a separate way to make it work. And there's many ways to make things work. This natural order of the family, where the the husband provides for the family and the women submits to the husband's authority, uh, b because Jesus says so, it just doesn't work in America today. That's my point. Yeah, my, my wife is going to work. She she's not going to yeah. deal with a bit. Does she submit completely Does to she your submit? authority? <laughs> Well, that's the great thing, right? There's uh, women well, out there. You know what? I, I'm going to convert to Islam, and she will. And if you say anything about it, you're Islamophobic. Well, you so don't even have to convert to Islam. Women <laughs> submit to men's authority all the time. There's websites you can go where, where <laughs> women get want to get dominated, right? Fuck Christianity for that. Find a girl that's wired and just want to get yeah, smacked that, around and told what to do. We don't live in a world where it's PC it, it anymore like either. It doesn't like that. Baby, any that's DP. Right. That's drunken peasant's <laughs> way of life. <laughs> Give me a submissive fucking woman on on a d d daddy dom little girl website. You like that? I don't even like <laughs> no, that. No. I don't even <laughs> like that. But I like that better than fucking uh, Christianity telling me Jesus umbrella is so big that my fucking wife gets to be under mine. I get to be under his. Yep. Who, who the fuck uses three umbrellas? This is a yeah, stupid. Look, 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 it's raining. It's raining. And you're not getting touched by the rain. 
Yeah, well, what's the wife's our brother going to do? Sit in a so, fucking Mai Tai? You notice how the husband and the wife, they have all these responsibilities laid out below them, but all Jesus is is a fucking umbrella. Yeah. Well, uh, the the thing that I notice is that the husband's umbrella is, re is redundant. Like, Jesus... Uh... You're right. <laughs> and if, if, in, in my religion, if I had a religion... The Jesus umbrella would be that fucking flying copter that Leonardo da Vinci created. That would go, <laughs> my Jesus would fly me around everywhere. That didn't work though. But it, well, it was well, a good idea. What about you, Arch? Like, how, how, how would you describe this? I, I don't know. <laughs> is, is there, there an umbrella concept character? to me? I don't get it. The entire is there... idea of the traditional family is something that I view as if you want to do it, do it. But I don't think it's necessarily important. Oh, well, didn't you guys have Thor and Odin and shit like that? That was more <laughs> badass. Yes, and we gave the women the key to the house so they could lock the man outside if he misbehaved, and then we gave the man an axe in case he didn't feel like <laughs> he was the house. So, 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 <laughs> right? You're, you're telling me that you faggots would go all the way to England to plunge and pillage, right? To plunder and pillage. You, you, and, and the husband comes home from a hard day at raiding, and because his wife has a booty fit, she can lock him up? Yes. But that's why, like I mentioned, he has, he has an axe. Yeah, he can tear the fucking door down. That's that's a real man right there. Yeah, but, but think about it, like it's your house. Like if you tear the door down, you're the one who has to rebuild it. Yeah, but you're a fucking Viking, so rebuilding <laughs> doors ain't shit. <laughs> well, while you're at it, might as well put a moat around the house. Fuck it, I'm a real man, I'm a Viking. Let, let, let's see what else the gentleman says. All right. Correct to say today, you're gonna be perceived falsely as a bigot for believing this oh you believe in this ancient form you need to become progressive and come up to speed but the bible tells us if we are biblical that there is an order to a family that the man is to be the the spiritual leader the leader this provider is what I like about christianity now i'm an atheist but there are some good <laughs> aspects of christianity like you, you you can never reach the point where you have a transgender child on the National Geographic with Christians. Because they, they will always go like, well, the Bible tells us. You know? And even if it's not real, maybe this religion is good for social cohesion at some point. You know, because if you move too far to the left, you 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 go to the to the zone with transgender children, to, to the place where they're pushing for pedophilia on Salon and other far left publications. Uh, I, I I don't know. Uh, like, there's I, a I lot of conservative pedophilia too, right? All the all the conservative yeah, cr not, Christians not... that have their child <laughs> wives in the fucking uh, in, in Utah, the the Mormon. No, I, I I agree with what you're saying, but it's not going to be more uh, considered moral, right? Like the far left, they want pedophilia to be considered moral. Like it, it, basically, the Middle East has pedophilia. You can have arranged marriages in the Middle East between. A little girl and an old man, and that is considered moral. Like it's not, it's not a crime. It's not, it's not frowned upon by society, right? And that's what the far left wants to do. But I don't think the far left focuses who, on who that. on the far left. You mean like George Soros or something like no, that? No, no. Like th th there's publications like Salon. They made a couple of articles. Um, you 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 understand that? Um, uh, let me let me remind remember the word they were using. Um, yeah, when when pedosexual becomes a word. That's where you know that there's people pushing for it. Pedosexual? Yeah, pedosexual, right? Because pedophiles. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. so acting like it's a uh, it's a, a a normal form of sex of human sexuality. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That 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 is literally the argument. Uh, they're they're starting with um, the pedophile, the, like the virtuous pedophile. That's I think it's actually a website about it. I yeah. see. I see what you're talking about here. I guess that article was taken down. Eventually, yeah, they took it down when Milo came up, right? So when the scandal about Milo came up, they took down the article so that they can make an article against Milo Yiannopoulos. This is your fault, Ben. I was the <laughs> one that asked Milo because I grew up Catholic too, and it was really disturbing to me that Milo uh, spoke so fondly of a Catholic priest that molested him as a kid. So we talked about it on the show, and the things he said on this show is how he got in trouble. But it, was, it was his personal experience with the, the encounter, right? Like, as a victim, he was basically saying that he's fine with it. Not, not that oh, he's fine he said with more it. than no, that. Not just as a victim. He said, he said more than that. He said he wouldn't be able to suck dick as good as he can if it weren't for father or whatever. Which is a joke, right? You would hope. <laughs> Fuck.
I yeah, mean, I don't know, but, but the thing is, like, everyone that went on Milo's ass forgets that he's actually a victim, and as far as I know, he didn't molest any kids. He but didn't mol- uh, no, no, no. He didn't molest kids, and I've seen idiots try to... They, they, they don't even think about what they're saying. They don't even understand the situation. They're like, wasn't Milo a pedophile? No, no. He he was he was a teenager and like a like a younger teenager I think like thirteen or fourteen and he had a sexual relationship with a priest <clears throat> at his church when he was a kid. So uh, I, I mean, but here's the thing: he didn't act like a victim until after he got in trouble. I yeah. mean, he, he normal he talked about it. He even said it was a normal thing. He said it's normal for for gay men. To, to have these relationships between older men and younger men. Yeah. A lot of a lot of gay men say that. Right. You, I still you know. find it disgusting, by the way. Right. Well, but there's I a lot of people that find gay adult gay men having sex disgusting. <clears throat> but the thing with Milo, like, I don't see him try to push this and normalize it in a society, right? I, I mean, he, he did say this on your live stream, but reading his work on Breitbart and reading, you know, his Twitter and Facebook, I've never seen him try to push for people. No, 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 no. There were two instances where I saw him. See, I had seen him on Joe Rogan talk about it, and it, I thought it was kind of strange. So when he came on, when he came on our show, I decided to ask him about it just because I thought it was really strange. I mean, he 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 always had very edgy things he would say, but I think that was and, and that was the thing that you know, hurt his career pretty badly. So I think... Yeah, another thing people were upset is uh, if he went to these parties where they have very young boys, uh, why didn't he say anything about it? And the thing is, like, unless you have proof, unless you have witnesses or, you know, like recordings, saying something about it means it's slanderous. And you can, you know, like, especially if it's people from Hollywood, like, they have the money to sue the living fuck out of you. Yeah, I, I just wonder, uh, I don't know, I, I'm wondering if this man is still a priest somewhere and being uh, led around children, um, and that's well, concerning. Yeah, well, yeah, and this is a systemic it probably problem. probably is. This is a systemic problem in Catholicism. Yeah. It happens all over the world, and it's been happening and, and forever. And they don't, they don't get, they don't get uh, their, their priesthood revoked. Oh, they do. No, they they, just, they usually don't. just get relocated to another area where they continue to to I, abuse I don't think children. They do that anymore, but but well, the hopefully thing is, not I think anymore. It's celibacy, like I think, is the celibacy the fact that they're they're not allowed to get wives. That's that's the reason why. You well, think that's I think, why? Well, you, you know what I yeah. think it is. Well, I, the celibacy is part of it. I think a lot of these uh, a lot of these men have uh, sexual urges that are not considered normal. By society, and they think they can suppress it through religion, through through religion, being a man of but God. Yeah, but, but, but then, that, but but here's the question, right? Why doesn't it happen in other denominations like Orthodox Christianity? Because you, you don't you don't hear Orthodox priests doing that. Because they're they're protected by their organization. Yeah, um, but but the Catholics were protecting them, you know, and eventually the scandal came out. So it, it's, have you it's seen, not like you can't protect it forever. Have you seen the movie Spotlight with Michael Keaton based on uh, the, the the scandal of Catholicism um, pedophilia? I mean, I mean that happens. I mean, there's so many movies about that. But the, this one specifically, there's a scene where the, the, he's confronting the the former priest, uh, and he's asking the priest why he was like you know gay with kids, and the priest is like, "Oh, I'm not. That's not gay. I'm not gay. I, I do this. I, I do. I do this. This was done to me. This is just what we do." Even in the city <laughs> I grew up in. Even in the city I grew up in, there was sexual abuse scandals with priests. Oh, dude, if, if you even at, at ones the, I like that were teachers at my high school. At the end of this movie, Spotlight, they have a list of of uh, scandals in the cities they were in, and it goes on for like uh, I, I want to say like three minutes, showing all these cities, and it's not just like one city on the screen; it's a list of cities and a list of churches that where these scandals were documented. Sure, the, there was also a murder uh, where where a, a Catholic priest murdered a nun with a letter opener and it went they they threw the case it happened in 1980 and the priest didn't go to jail for it until like 2008 2009 yeah they cover up everything yeah but by the way this justin breaking news there's a riot at portland right now whoa uh, that's crazy yeah that's let, let me let me give you a we link. live um, we and, live and about a three-hour drive from portland don't fuck with Antifa, not in Portland, man. Not in Portland. 
I wonder if there's live coverage from anywhere. Yeah, that would be. Uh... Yeah, but the thing is, uh, I, I, I'm getting really sleepy because it's 5 a.m. in my country. So, um, yeah, I mean, if uh, if you need to go, that's fine. I know you guys are staying up late. We can uh, we can wrap up the show on our own if you if you're tired. We get it. I'll, I'll I'll try I'll try to stay for 15 more minutes while we talk okay. about this because it's, uh, <clears throat> it's something that I haven't read either. I'm fine. Yeah. I stay up super late all the fucking time. So, Damn. all right. So, uh, oh, here. I wonder if. Let's see if there's anything on the CNN. Anti-fascist and anti-racist protesters chant "Bye bye Nazis" as Patriot Prayer event is shut down by feds after being declared a riot. Uh, it wasn't. Huh. So it it wasn't part of the anti-ice protests. So, uh, th there's a picture with a guy uh, bleeding on the ground. This is blood. Oh, it's it's a it's a blue check mark journalist, right? So a journalist got black clad protester was here when things got heated, and I was asked not to take a photo. And I figured I would uh, do this guy that one favor. He looks really fucked up. Plus, I had to catch up the Patriot group. <coughs> so there's there's violence with Antifa. Oh, big big fucking surprise. Yeah, I wonder how many uh, ended up getting arrested because of it. Oh, probably a lot. But, but, but anyway, it was uh, it was really nice of you guys to have me on. Um, sure. Thank you. Yeah, uh, was was really nice. So, thank you for the chat for listening. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, and uh, I, if we ever have you on again, maybe we'll do an earlier show. We did that for Sargon once, where we started a show at noon our time instead of uh, you know during our afternoon yeah uh, have a have a great night and thanks for being on the show thank you see ya see ya yeah, mate. all right did arch leave no no arch okay. is still here i just have yep. to reconfigure everything because skype is shit ah uh, i can hang out for a while longer cool all right yeah we only have let's see we have about 45 minutes or so left I'm gonna fix his thing here and then I'll play a video oh sorry. I don't know I someone sent me this video and I'm like what the hell is this this is it's called Piper knows about penis <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour, guys this is Piper and Wow well oh, Piper's yeah Piper's not bad looking. I've seen this girl before. She has some of the most amazing boobs, and she's she doesn't care. Like she she's nipping out all the fucking time. She she's probably one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, just because of her boobs. Yeah, that seems to work. <laughs> yeah. Today we are at the Musée d'Orsay to continue our penis in Paris week. Yes, because here at the Musée d'Orsay there are a lot of. And penises. she's French. And I mean, like a I think lot. She might be French Canadian. There's a lot of breasts too. But we're not going to talk about this because YouTube doesn't very much like breasts. So we're talking about penises. And <laughs> I got awesome facts about the male anatomy for you. She's the female the JF. Right? No, she's not. Yeah. She's talking about this this uh, ethno state. No, she's not. The, the penis ethno state. Yeah, cool. she didn't. Yeah, she didn't say anything about an ethno no, state. No. no, maybe I'm just staring You're too just, hard yeah. at those boobs, have dude. An ethno state without penises. Okay. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. Support or you know, like words with some images, so that you can really understand all about the art and the penises and how they merge here at the Musée d'Orsay. She's my Best favorite YouTuber awesome of all time. For the she's amazing. In Paris right here behind me with her she's a genius yeah i don't think she's french canadian because she said she's in paris and she oh. doesn't quite sound fr uh canadian that dude do you think she'll lick my legs a lot of penises, but as you can see he wasn't very good at it because well it's just kind of blah, blah up there uh -huh. well the thing is in these days like the olden days they kind of put more effort into, well, the beauty of the masculinity. So if you had, like, big muscles... Like me? Okay. Is she a troll? No, dude. She's... Her tits are too big to be a troll. She's, this what? Is, this, she's, Casey Tron was a troll. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. This is different. This Why different. is that different? Look she has these, big boobs and she was a troll. Look at these tits, though. These are fake as fuck. Oh, my God. 
I, I, I don't they know. They look like they were pumped up by a bicycle pump. I don't. I I, I can't make that uh, decision. I I can't choose whether or not they were see fake how or real. They, see how gravity doesn't apply to them whatsoever. It's, it's because she's uh, divine, right? These tits are. These tits are the, the the. They're doing God's work right now. Cute face, a small tongue, uh -huh. and pale skin. Well, you were a beautiful man. And you needed a teeny weeny penis. Yeah, yeah. Back then, teeny weeny was the best you can have. Hey! Historically, tiny penises are the best you can have, <laughs> Is that man. why you sound so happy? Yeah! She's, she's, she's literally saying everything she can to make me fall in love with her. Before she opened her fucking mouth. Just those tits right are there. Are you saying you have a tiny penis? I'm, I'm, I'm saying that maybe... No. It's a good size. Even, you know... If you had like a huge penis, <laughs> it would seem like grotesque and like you were a little dumb dumb, you know? Yeah. That's why most of Big the dick idiots. And well, sculptures are represented with teeny weeny penises because the brain was more important. Yeah. All right, I'm d I'm done. What do you mean? I'm done. She's a genius. No, she's not. She's, a, she's telling us historical accuracies here. You, would you rather watch more fake news? You're, you're just mad because she's saying you got a tiny brain, Benjamin. You have a tiny brain. All your all your brain matter went to your you know big what? old dick, I'm gonna do, Ben. I'm going to do a... <laughs> your big old dick. My, my, uh, I'm going to do a quick advertisement for our uh, VidCon uh, vlog that we did. Oh? So if you're a $10 patron, that's up right now. You can become a ten dollar patron at any point to see it. I'm gonna give you guys just a little preview of it, really quick. Wait, when did you take this? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what? I didn't consent to this. <laughs> Not the faintest hint of a reaction. <laughs> I didn't even wake up. What, listen to what she says next. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So. <sighs> Billy the Fridge endorses this. Nope. But yeah, check out the full video. Was You'll see all for the this. behind the scenes stuff. There's actually three videos. Oh, really? Yeah, there's there's three separate videos that I made. Nice. Uh, the live stream, uh, the, w when we went to Venice Beach, and you know the stuff from around the hotel, and then the night we went out drinking. You know why I didn't wake up to that, right? I, because you're a lazy motherfucker, nope. and you wake up when you want to? Because even in my sleep, I know Snickers aren't keto. Oh, yeah, Snickers. Snickers. That's, that's what it said. Snickers aren't keto. Snickers, Snickers, Snickers. And I'm on a diet, so why say, wake say up? Say it really fast. Snickers, Snickers, Snickers. Faster. Snickers, Snickers, <laughs> Snickers, 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 <laughs> Snickers, Snickers, <laughs> Snickers, 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 Snickers. Hungry? Nick why wait? Yeah, you. Uh, that's what they call uh, uh, female underwear in the UK. Snickers? Yeah, and, uh, the, the, you know, the Knicks is actually short for the New York Knickerbockers. Yeah, Knickerbockers. That's yeah. a different type of clothing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I just want to shout out right now that a little Billy there, I thought I would snore louder than this. I'm just like a little light wheezing. I thought you would have got me on the video and I've been like, Dude, I there. I wish I would have set up the camera just to capture us snoring. Because all three of us, I know we snore really loud. I, I don't know who's worse because I can't hear myself. I, I heard I'm assume, the worst. I, I would assume I was, but Pimp Monk said you were, and I know Pimp Monk. <clears throat> Pimp Monk, oh, yeah, yeah. you you might have been a worse snorer than Pimp Monk, but it's 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 tough. Like Pimp Monk says you're the worst, but he was pretty bad as well. And Pimp Monk, he'd snore and then he would just rip a big fart in unison with the snoring and then continue snoring. You didn't know whether it was a snore That's or a gross. fart half the time. His farts, his butthole was open. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, after the show's over, uh, for those of you who are 
either sponsors or ten dollar patrons, you'll get to see our after show that Billy and I will do after we're done here. Are we going to learn more about Piper and the the, the, the the tiny brain, big dicks, and the the genius little ones? Yeah, I guess we can watch more of that in the after show. Piper, she's my new favorite YouTuber. I'm a big fan of hers. She's got big brains. Big brains. Two big brains on the front of her big brains chest. <clears throat> this is the people who show to that big brain to that truck. This is for jigglers and jigglers. Do not try this at home. Holy shit, dude. What is this? Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah. Okay. This yeah. is genius. What does he have uh like This guy's got a huge downs dick. or something? <gasps> Did you notice that a lot of people with uh like down syndrome and stuff, they have huge dicks? No, because I don't look at the dicks of people you with never Down go syndrome. Swimming, you never go swimming on the special days. No. It's cheaper. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. I, open swim. There's always like a group of people with Down You're weird. There. What? You should you should be kept away from these people. Got, well, I don't swim with them. I just, uh, you just stare at them in the locker room? And you can't help but look. They look You're, like fucking elephants from the do waist they down. they have very low IQs? They do. Maybe you... I don't know, man. I'm just trying to be a sweet boy. This guy's fucking awesome. Is this Ow. is this a tryout video for the XFL? <laughs> oh. What is? What? <laughs> I hope is this there is a his point to this. It, 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 there doesn't seem to be one. Uh, it, I hope that's his truck and not somebody else's. No, I hope it's somebody else's and they come out and kick his ass for fucking <laughs> with his truck. This is how we found the world's first superhero. Oh, no! no way. If the truck explodes this time, it's real. Ah. Oh. <laughs> uh, I think that's a Georgia license plate, which explains a lot. Uh. He probably knocked the wind out of himself there. Dude, that's the worst. Yeah, it sounds like he did. That was Excelsior right there. Yeah, I don't know why. Who knows why people do what they do. <laughs> What's well, because he's a juggalo? He said this is for the juggalos. Here's this video is called "How Damaged Is My Colon That I Need to Anal Probe to Fully Evacuate My Poop." No way. All right, I ask, how much have I damaged my colon? Because I had to go to the bathroom, take a poop, then I thought I was done. And I decided to uh, do a little extra work since this bathroom allowed for some privacy. One of them ones you can lock yourself in. And did a little, uh, you could call it anal probing. <laughs> Hold up. Who makes videos uh, saying this stuff? Okay, I've been to those bathrooms. They're on airports. Now I'm never going there ever again. <laughs> <laughs> With this device, okay, no! it's just it's just a copper tube, my dude. With... That's <laughs> pretty large. Uh, uh... And I put magnets inside. Oh, good thing he has okay. magnets in what, there. What does he have? Magnetic shit. I, 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 you know what? If he's willing to shove that up his ass, maybe. And then immediately afterward, after uh, inserting it about six inches. I had to uh, I had to poop again. I had to go right back and poop like just as much. Okay? And I did have a little tightness around the appendix area before and I don't so much have the uh, tightness around my appendix area now. So I'm wondering what kind of damage does my colon, does my whole that area, intestinal area, have? Uh, probably a lot, because you shove shit up your asshole all the time. You got a six-inch fucking brick up in there, uh, tr tr trying to tell yourself that it's there to pull a poopy out. No, you're in there butt-banging yourself in the yeah. bathroom, my dude. That's weird. Th 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 I would like to point out, he butt banged himself with a tube he just happened to be carrying. Imagine the kind of <laughs> hardware he uses on his spare time. Right. Yeah. This motherfucker was equipped with magnets, and that's his that's his on the go deal, though. He's got a genetic jackhammer in his fucking basement. He's just pounding away at his anus. Of course, it's damaged, dude. All right. That I actually uh, relieve constipation of of some kind that's near. More the sphincter area, I guess, with uh, the the probe. 
I have read how uh, probing up there can uh, relieve some cases. All right, and it's relieving mine. It's it's maybe causing relief for the tightness around the appendix, and then also ben, just general. Should we should we go fracking in our assholes? No. But it's, it's relieving tension from his appendix. Maybe you don't need to get surgery for your hernias. Maybe hernias gonna, have nothing to do with tension on my know? appendix. How do you know? We have to shove something up your butt first. We might no. save We might save you a lot of downtime and doctor bills if we just put stuff in your butt first. That has nothing to do with hernias. Are you sure? Yes, hernias have to do with your guts popping through your muscle and tissue. And well, maybe it's popping through because you have a lot of backed up poo-poos. And I'm wondering, <sighs> am I... Am I just not active enough, or and I am not. I really. You're too active with your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're overactive, motherfucker. I sit at the library all day. All right. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not active enough. I'm sitting at the library all day. Is it just me? Or does that that sound like he's sitting in the library with a copper tube up his ass all day? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's checking out different books to shove up his asshole. <laughs> um, how much? How much could trampolines work? Because this, this is that was a mechanical solution that I did. I mean, there was magnetic, the magnetic uh, effect as well. But what the fuck there's is a magnetic effect going to do? There's not, yeah, there's nothing magnetic going on. Is this guy eating coins, and that's yeah. it, he's just trying to get the magnets to pull the coins out of his asshole, jamming it on up there, and and working the muscles. Or something working, working the lining up there, that's that's causing some kind of blockage. I must, I may have some kind of a a bubble or something that that poop is collecting in in my intestines that I, I release every so often with with a probe. Have you ever okay. fucked a girl in the ass, all right? If if you go deep enough, you're going to get a little shit on your dick. This guy's just shoving a like six-inch rod up his fucking anus. I like of course, how you, more poop's going to come out. I like it's, how you just said, have you ever fucked a girl in the ass? Well, it's just like, come on, man. Like, there's a reason there's poo-poo up there. It doesn't all come out in one flail fucking swoop. You don't have a soft-serve machine no, in your anus. No, I think it was the I think it was the magnets that did it. Fucking magnets, how do they work? If that type of constipation, a weakening of uh, the intestinal walls, maybe. And it's like I can't. Why don't you take a laxative? Like, no one ever, no one ever recommends putting shit in your ass to relieve constipation. I can't, I can't really, I can't walk enough to, to relieve that. So. <laughs> I can't walk. I know yeah. what he's saying, but god damn it, that is beautiful. Yeah, yep. I'll still get constipated in that way. Even when I have to poop, I don't I don't completely evacuate. So that's a concern. You, I mean normal normal colons will completely evacuate. Dog, eat some more I fiber. Eat some more fiber in your diet. Don't shove shit up your butthole. You're gonna damage more than your colon here. You're gonna damage your self-respect when your asshole's yeah. loose and your balloon nuts falling out of your butt. You got a prolapse anus because you're digging around in there. <laughs> oh my god! Eat a bran muffin, yeah. dude. You'll poop like a, a take a, a laxative. Some yogurt, some laxative, a bran muffin. It'll regulate your poop like crazy. Activia. Yeah, get some Activia, dude. Don't jam sh Legos in your butt. Legos. I don't know what he's building down there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put up the timer. Oh, my gosh. And then after the... So All right, she ever put a Warhammer character in your butthole? <laughs> Not that I can remember, but, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I think it would be a memorable experience, so I'm going to side with no. If you want to send in any more Streamlabs or Super Chats, help us reach our goal up above here. That helps keep the show going, helps everything go great. Also, if you want something in return for your money, become a patron... We need we need more patrons now, guys. So if you can if you can help us out with that, that would be great. And to top it all off, the patrons get to watch the after show where uh, we're gonna watch a little more Piper. Okay, she's my insist. favorite. She's my favorite new YouTuber, especially after the fucking Juggalo truck diver and and this fucking guy digging around his asshole poop. Piper is a queen. 
She's a dang. What's, what's her YouTube? I don't know. Okay. I just, I just remember her. Arch, can you move to America and run for president, or at least start a heretical uprising? Blood orgies rule. Is this the first time hearing about blood orgies, Arch? Well, Warhammer 40k does have a god specifically dick, uh, dedicated to violent rape, and the more violent, the better. So, how violent? Like, are we talking? We are literally talking. The more violent, the better. The worse it is, the better. You'll get more power. Is it is it in 40k? Yes. So there's access to chainsaws. Yes, and if you oh, were to man. shove one of those up your ass, you would be given power by God. Really? Yes. This is fact, is it, kids. Is it, Do what's it called? Self-immolation? Or no? Justice for Waluigi. Also, suck V? Suck V? Wow, I cannot... Well, actually, I can't. I can believe how many subscribers Piper has. Yeah. Dude, hey, did you not see Piper? She's got two big, beautiful yeah, brains. That's, that's why she gets so many views oh, and subscribers. Wow. Do I sense jealousy? No. It's just because she's running around telling people they got big old brains. If they got tiny dicks. Ben's mad because she's got a big old stinking dummy dick. <laughs> <sighs> Happy uh, early birthday, Spirit Flame. Yeah, Spirit, Spirit Flame is Canadian, and her birthday is on Canada Day. Oh, Canada. I'm excited for Canada Day. I'm just going to sleep through it. Yeah. <laughs> did you did, did you watch the uh, new um, um, Glow season on Netflix? No, no, I haven't Glow season it. two? I don't even have Netflix. Damn. Yeah, dude, I don't watch movies and shit. I just Damn. don't. I mean, I, I did watch Glow, like, last season. Just because I, you know, I like the concept of it. But, um, I don't know. This is a really good season, this season. I uh, binge watched it. Yeah, I can't do that. I can't binge watch. I know a lot of people do it, though. I had to. I, you know what? I binge watched Glow and I binge watched uh, Fuller House. That's, that's the type of psycho so, I am. So, uh... Arch, how many how many uh like Warhammer figurines would you say you have? Oh God, um, <laughs> I know this is not not going to necessarily mean anything to you, but I have six thousand points of Skaven. The Skaven are literally <laughs> a faction that turn betrayal into a virtue. Um, <laughs> they are the only faction in the game that can friendly fire without any consequences. In fact, it is not only a possible stratagem; it is an expected stratagem. <laughs> are Skaven, are they like rat humans or what are they? Yes, rat humans. Yeah. They require a lot of bodies on the board to be effective. When I played, I had Chaos Space. Well, I didn't even play. I bought $300 of the Chaos Space Marines, and it was a terrible waste of money. <laughs> Manny says, I was K's very never flexible. Waste of money. Well, I never played it. That was the problem. I was very flexible as a child. Everyone called me Spider-Man because my uncle was murdered. <laughs> what? Shout out to Manny with the Manny. 20 money. Thank you, my 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 friend. We were at TSA uh, in Seattle recently. And yeah, no I was, Manny. I, I did run into some people I knew, but... Uh, you did? There was no Manny. Uh, every time I go to the airport, I run into like people that I know. It's weird. Watching Dex Luther uh, said watching Piper porn right now. Fat, fat. What has she actually made porn? No, there's no adult. Actually, you know what though? You were right. I looked it up and she is French Canadian. Hey, it didn't sound like it. Wee oui, wee. Oui. It's not the same. Wee oui, wee. Oui. I told you she was JF with tits. She's not though. I don't know. I don't know the difference. You either have big old beautiful fucking tits or you don't. That's all I know in this world. I have big old beautiful fucking tits. Okay, they're sloppy, but they're yeah. still big. They're still big. Would you rather have a girl that looked like me with no tits or a girl that looked like me with big old fucking sloppy tits? No tits. What? <laughs> You'd rather have a no-titted me than a big old fucking slop-titted me? Not you. Girl, you. You said a girl. Yeah, a girl that looked like me. Oh, But no, had no, no tits or big old sloppy floppies. I say no altogether. Oh, man. <laughs> Wow, Ben. I pass on the whole package. <gasps> People are saying there is Piper porn. Wow. Can I just say that I'm going to have to take a couple weeks off. 
I'm gonna have to heal because I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna hurt myself watching this. Oh crap! <laughs> so Arch, <laughs> <laughs> um, do we know if she's descended from Joachim Piper, the famous Nazi? I, I, I don't know. Is that is that a deal breaker? <laughs> Honestly, no, I don't care if she was. Contraire. I don't. <laughs> that's horrible. I don't care if she's fucking transgender Hitler with tits like that. I'm smashing. Uno gender. Transgender Hitler. Yeah, you think transgender Hitler would have the best fucking tits, right? Why? Uh, just imagine, like all that scientific ad advancement at his disposal, all that fucking illegal ass science shit. Hitler would probably Hitler would probably be. Uh, he would probably keep his dick. He had a big old stinking fucking dick, but he had a big old fucking tits too. He'd look like a Kardashian basically, with a dick. One at one last ass blast of money from your number one Irish fan. I also saw her Pornhub. I, I didn't see. Oh, sh Piper has a Pornhub channel. I also I also saw her porn hub channel Billy. She's all you want and more. <gasps> oh man! So when I want to introduce myself to her. Should I be like, "Hi, Piper. I'm I'm got a little tiny dick and a big brain. Love me." Think that would work? I think uh, undoubtedly. Because, yeah. Yes. Yes. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of a. I, I saw one of her videos before, like a long time ago, and I, I was like, "This girl's amazing," because obviously her boobs were showing uh, through her t-shirt. And uh, say what you want about boobs through t-shirts, but it's one of the best ways to view boobs. Let's see. Someone said, uh, "Good to see you, Arch. I'm having a hell of a time painting and putting. What is it, Gilliman? Gilliman. Gilliman." Yes, Kill Robo Girly Man. <laughs> <laughs> Long live special snowflake space marines. Is that what the Chaos special Space Marines snow. are? No, they invented a brand new type of space marines that are super rare super soldiers. Huh. Hobo Killer says, is Western civilization at any real risk of collapse in the next decades? Decade? No. Decades? I don't know. I mean, I don't really think it is anymore because European politicians are starting to stamp down on this stuff, but you can't the, really say no, can't you? I think the, no. the we wouldn't notice the collapse. Like we wouldn't we would just We wouldn't notice the collapse of civilization. No, we wouldn't. Because <laughs> they would they would we, put we, we might notice the collapse itself, but perhaps yeah. not the lead up to it. Right. Because they would convince us that we're all right up until the moment we were dead. <laughs> I mean, we just because civilization collapsed doesn't necessarily mean we're dead. It just means civilization collapsed. I know, and I think we would think we were just fine. I think we'd be sitting like uh, you, you ever see that that meme where there's a dog in a bar and the bar okay, is on well, fire. Uh, no, no civilization, no memes, no n no infrastructure, no uh, amenities, no electricity, no internet, no what cell about, phone. Will Piper be there? Uh, I probably wouldn't notice because Pornhub is stop updating. <laughs> oh. oh, she's not. Piper's not into brains. Luckily, I got a big old fucking dummy dick. Maybe, you think Piper's into lesbians? I could tuck it back and just. Aren't to most be a, female porn stars into lesbians? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna become a lesbian. Well, not lesbians. They're into being lesbians with other female porn yeah, stars. Yeah. Not I'm tuck it back. Not some you know butch. Look, woman I'm gonna find from love, Capitol Hill. Love finds a way, Ben. Love finds a way. Now, when you play Warhammer, are all, are all your pieces like finely painted, Arch? No, I can't paint. Literally can't. So you just put the characters together and play with them, or do you get them? Like, do you have a, a team that you got painted, or? My Skavens were entirely painted via the application of a spray can. Oh. <laughs> do you have to have them painted to play them? No. That's it not depends a... on your local group. It's encouraged, okay. obviously, but doesn't necessarily have to be a rule. Yeah, I sat down and tried to paint my army, and I got like, I don't know. You got week, lazy. A week into it, dude, and I was like, fuck this. I don't want to play this game anymore because I tried to paint everything. And I'm not a great painter, but I tried. I used to, uh, I used to paint figurines that I used for tabletop Dungeons & Dragons. 
you know, when, when we actually had a map. You know, it was fun, though. When I was a kid, I would take the army men and I would cut the barrels of their rifle off and I would take a lighter and I would burn the barrel of their rifle and, and melt it into their crotch so it looked like they were they had big old dicks. You're insane. What? That was fun. Then I would repaint them green so, so you couldn't so, see the burn mark. So you're just like Digby when Digby was... Uh, dismembering the Family Guy characters. Not exactly, because those Family Guy characters were good toys. Like, who plays with army men? I play with that shit all the time. Army men? But they were, like, expendable, but I wouldn't give them dicks. Oh, dude, I, would I would blow them up with firecrackers and shit like that. Yeah, I would just give them dicks, well, then blow them up. <sighs> I'd give them big old rifle dicks, and then boom, burn them. Next to the ants underneath the, uh, this, 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 the magnifying glass in the sun. Used to you ever use a magnifying glass to burn shit? Hey Ben and Billy DP is one of the best podcasts to have when I do my drawings. So take some money as a thanks. Thank you. Thank you, your furry otaku. Oh, Arch, I have so many questions I want to ask you about Warhammer, but I really don't know. I mean, he's here and we have him for like eight more minutes. I know. So. I, I cause I ask I, him questions. I almost played it, but I didn't. Now I feel like a dumbass and. Like what 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 team would you suggest for somebody who's just breaking into Warhammer? Hmm, for forty k, just pick up the Space Marines. I mean, you got a pretty good start with the Chaos Space Marines. Yeah, I, I think I I think I just threw away all my uh, Chaos Space Marine pieces from like I had them for twenty years almost. I think I got them in two thousand one. Are you still playing? Pokemon? Which case they're probably horribly outdated anyway. So no, yeah, no foul. Yeah, I threw them all away. You got a Pokemon Go friend request. Yeah. Do you have any room? Yes, I do have room. Slain Hope, uh, tweet that to me. Pokemon. Go. Yeah, yeah. Billy the Fridge still plays Pokemon Go. Arch, he still plays that shit. What? Why not? Thank you. Thank you know you. what? You know, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. Billy the Fridge, seven months ago, weighed six hundred pounds, and now he's down to what? Four fifty? No, four sixty. Four sixty. And so that's quite a, a loss. And Pokemon Go does have something to do with it. And not only it that, makes him more active. Two years ago, when I started playing Pokemon Go, I couldn't fucking walk. Okay, well, I, I I could stand I could stand up for like two minutes, and my leg would give out. And I went to the doctors, and we couldn't figure out what it was. And fucking, I started playing Pokemon Go, and through like walking through the park and shit, I just kind of walked it out. Yeah, your muscles got too weak. No, because I was I was like. I was doing a lot of activity and stuff too. I think I just I needed to to do a slower pace. I was going to the gym for like six months you trying were? to to try and to try and fix my fucking leg, dude. I was running treadmill, then I was doing a uh, bicycle. I was trying to gain the strength back, and nothing I did was working until I, until I picked up Pokemon Go and I, I would walk. Know. I would walk two minutes, three minutes, sit down on a bench, regain my composure, stand back up, walk again, catch a fucking Pikachu, catch a Snorlax. I get a phone call. From some guy in Festus, Missouri. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, hallelujah to Pokemon Go, then. That's really impressive, Thank though, you. that you also went white. Well, I mean, it's not it's not as impressive as the fact that I was almost 600 fucking pounds. <laughs> Holy shit. And how tall are you? 6'3"? I was 6'3". I was 6'4 in high school. But I, when you when you age and you're fat, it compresses your spine yeah. and you, you shrink. So now I'm like 6'2". Damn. Uh, on a good day, I'm 6'3", though. Like, when I get some good rest and my fucking spine alleviates out. But usually every day, I'm like 6'2", because shrinking. Worse. Man, shrinkage just hits you everywhere, doesn't it? Yeah, like my dick and my height. <laughs> and <then> Wait. <laughs> yeah, I'm Pokemon Go's Jared from Subway. I, what? Yeah, because Jared from Subway ate Have all those sandwiches. Have you been buying child prostitutes? No, I don't buy them. Just I play, po oh, I play Pokemon. Case. I play Pokemon with them. <sighs> I don't know if they're prostitutes. <laughs> All I'm doing is playing Pokemon. I might have had I bone wouldn't, cancer. Wouldn't even be surprised if that is a service somewhere in China. Prostitutes to play Pokemon with? <laughs> and just rent children to play Pokemon Go with. Oh my god. That's the worst. Oh, 20, oh, Manny's, Manny with his $25. Big, big Manny man. With the 25. Yeah. Bang, bang. And pretty soon here we'll have, uh, if, if you guys aren't already, subscribe to the calendar. There's a link down below to join 
our our uh, Gmail calendar. Basically, it'll integrate into your calendar through your Gmail. It'll send you alerts. When we're when we're streaming, if you're a patron, you'll know when all the stuff is going on. We're planning something big for the private show this month because we got to do something different. We gotta we gotta we gotta increase awareness of the private shows. And if you guys have any suggestions about something you want to see during a private show, if you're not a patron now but you're on the fence about it, feel free to let us know. And since Ben hates eggs and I hate weed. Uh, oh, we, we God. had we had to take weed off of the 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 this the wheel. If we bring the wheel back, we're gonna change the weed slots with hard boiled eggs. Cause you love weed. I will fucking puke <laughs> if I if I have to. I eat. think it's only fair. That's not fair. Weed doesn't what? make you puke. It just makes you sleepy. Well, I puked. You puked, puked from the alcohol. Maybe it was the weed. No. Maybe it was the weed. We'll see. We're gonna put hard boiled eggs on the wheel. <laughs> uh, so arch is there anything that you would like to say to the audience uh now that we're closing down on the the, the timer any anything any lasting words you have hmm well i would uh, i'd make a suggestion for the uh the private show yeah yeah sure like you said uh breasts rule the world basically so have you ever considered showing off yours I think I did last time. Yeah, you the show. did. You did. Oh man, because I take my shirt off because I puked all over it. You know, you know, I've I've taken off my shirt for like donations of a certain number too. That's weird when that happens because I'm not, you know, I'm not used to being a, a piece of meat for people in real life. I am. So it's kind of weird on the internet when that happens. There that there's weird people watching me. Uh, but yeah, that, that is, you know what we might do because we got to stream on a different platform besides YouTube to do this, but maybe, maybe show videos with, with breasts in them. That or, would help. Or check this out. We send prostitutes to every viewer's house for like an immersive experience where every time that I put my breasts in the camera, the prostitute would then put their breasts in the person's face. It's kind of like smell a vision or 3d. <laughs> I, I think, I think that, that could, would make it popular. Yeah, I'm almost certain. Fact. Yes, there's some legalities that would need to be worked out for something like that. Oh, because prostitution is illegal in most places. But what if it's part of an immersive online experience? Still illegal, huh? No, no, no. It is illegal, but paid actresses. That's legal. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you know what? It's not prostitution when there's a camera there filming it. I mean, for all intents and purposes, porn is prostitution. People are being paid to have sex. But because it's filmed and put out as a product, it's not considered prostitution. There you go, bud. You're selling interactive experience. No, you're selling interactive cinematography the perfect solution yeah it's it's the perfect loophole it's the poop hole loophole so guys we're about to do the post show after we let arch go uh we'll probably take a break for like 10 minutes and then we'll do the the post show uh those of you who qualify for it you can be part of it I don't think we're going to spend the whole show talking to everybody, but we'll bring them in on the in the end to yeah, talk to everybody. Because we got to watch some more of that Piper. If you're not a patron, just become a sponsor. If you don't like Patreon and shit, just click on the sponsor button. We're almost to 100 sponsors. We just need like eight more of you to sign up, and we'll be at 100. So, yeah, I, I think that wraps it up. Thanks for being on the show, Arch. You're welcome back anytime. And what, like I said, we'll, we'll probably do an earlier show. Uh, pretty soon that uh, you know that's more European friendly cool well, thank you very much for having me thank you and uh, thanks to all you guys for watching have a good night in the beginning there was nothing and then there was the drunken peasants podcast drunken peasants Drunken peasants, drunken peasants, 
Drunk and peasant From the strangest corners of the internet Gonna get TP'd by Billy and Ben You know where you can find them at Get ready cause they're gonna kick your Drunk and peasants Drunk and peasants Drunk and peasants Drunk and peasants, Drunk and peasants.